Hello everybody, I think I'm ready to get started. So let's chat a little first, before we get into the game. Looks like we have a couple of new followers I missed from earlier, so thank you again, one salty ginger and Igonic for the follows, do appreciate it. Oops. <laughs> We're gonna see those a couple times, I accidentally clicked out like five times. My bad. But anyway, uh, well, we are halfway-ish through open. the big top turnabout case. <laughs> like, well, it's it's something. It's You're wide open. you know there are, there are aspects of the case I forgot about, which makes me kind of un unhappy to remember that they are part of this case. You're wide open. Sadly, somehow still not the worst case in the game. Despite those very glaring, obvious, creepy issues. I I don't think the game writers intended it for it to be creepy. But it's definitely creepy. Welcome in Parameter. I'm just kind of like, uh just, I don't know. Well, we're gonna we're gonna take a deep breath. We're gonna go. Hopefully this is the lowest the game will go. We know better though. Oh, I actually recognize this song. What is this song called? Ah, uh, that makes sense. I've heard remixes of the song in a different game. Then I saw what the song was called and I'm like, I can't say what the name of the song is. That would be spoilers. But anyway, let's go ahead and pause that music for now. Well, I mean, we're 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 getting there, chat. It's just I'm not gonna lie, the enthusiasm to get through this particular case is definitely low. Wide open. But it's kind of like a band-aid. You, you gotta you gotta get it done at some point. Just rip it off, it'll be fine. Oh excuse me, it's not big top turnabout, it's turnabout big top, whatever. December 29, 303 PM, right in company, lol offices. Um, Nick, what is it? I've got a confession to make. I'm terrible at figuring out magic tricks. Magic tricks? Yup, magic tricks You're are by open. their very definition tricks, right? But I can never figure out the tricks when I see them. That's because the tricks are performed by pros. They do it so you can't guess the trick. But, but, the trick Pearly showed me was incredible. Earls did a magic trick. Hmm. What kind of trick was it? Let's see. Looked like she pulled the end of her thumb off. Wow. <laughs> I chat this. D don't make, do not make me pause the playthrough to go look up the slow clap. I have a sound clip of it. That is really special. Huh. First she put her right thumb next to her left hand. Then it just separated. She could move it up and down and everything. It was incredible. See, moments like this chat are why I can't relate to this character. This stuff right here, I'm just like, wow, she's really stupid. <laughs> I'm just like, 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 chat, even, like, I know, you know, I'm definitely older playing this game, but, like, even then, I'm like, that's just really sad. <laughs> just, I don't find it endearing. I'm just like, wow, that's, hmm. At least, at least me at a loss of words, to be honest with you, chat. Really? Was it kind of like this? What? What? How'd you do that? Nick, you're like a real magician. See, this is why I just can't figure out magic. I'm no good. A dumb assistant for a dumb lawyer. I mean, she's she's about as capable of figuring out the magic trick as she's able to, I guess, perform lawyer duties. So I, I guess this kind of works. Sorry, chat. Give me one second. I had something open that I was looking at, and I don't see it now. Okay, there we go. There we go, much better. Especially hard tricks like flying away from the scene of a murder. It'll take all the fun out of magic if you keep trying to figure it out. I'll ask her what to do, even though that's clearly a mistake. I don't see any way out of this. We're stuck between a rock and a hard place. There's no way we could solve the mystery of a criminal flying by tomorrow. I was thinking. 
Do you really think the criminal flew through the air? The only one who thinks that is Mo, right? He's, he says that he saw it. That's true. I'll look awfully serious when he said that. Do you think he might be trying to frame Max? If that was it, he would have simply said I saw Max. That would have been enough. Welcome, Alpha Kappa. There's no reason why anyone would believe he flew. But what if the criminal really did fly? There's only one person who could do that. Max! You're really not helping my confidence here, Maya. Any ideas? Everyone seems to hate Max. Ben, Trillo, Mo, the chat. They all have nothing nice to say. That magician does seem rather full of himself, doesn't he? Especially when he says things like customers only go to the circus to see him. He even hit Ben over the head with a bottle. But... But what? But that doesn't seem enough to frame another person for murder. Doesn't it, though? I mean... I mean... It, yes? <laughs> People, people have died for less, Maya. I'm going to break it to you real nice and slow. It was proven that neither Ben nor Mo lied on the stand. Maybe Ben saw the ringmaster wearing Max's costume, but Mo clearly said that he saw Max himself. I guess I'll go to the detention center. December 29th, detention center, visitor's room. Oh, my sweeties! You mind hurrying up and getting me out of this place? We're doing our best, Max. Just hang in there. A little while ago, some people from a local TV station came by. And since I'm a famed magician, they said, let's make you your very own TV special. Really? What kind of TV special? Maximilian Galactica. The Great Prison Escape. He would be aired live. Hey, that sounds like it would be an awesome special. What if I do this special before I'm acquitted? They'll never let me out of here for real. Well, it would surely be an unnecessary addition to your troubles with the law. That's what I was thinking. The production staff is already working on the show. If you don't get me out quick, I'll have no choice but to stage a real prison break. You seem awfully calm about that possibility. I'd have no choice. It would be a contractual obligation. That show business. And let's ask him about the night of the murder. Um, the night of the crime. You didn't happen to fly off into the sky, did you? Here is how everything went down, sweetie. The time of the murder, I was sitting in the ringmaster's room. Not to mention, flying off into the sky is not just something I can do at will. I don't care what the stoogie clown says. It wasn't me. Max, Max, do you mind teaching me the trick behind flying? Hmm, you have to forgive me, sweetie. Wait, didn't he already tell us in the other, like, am I hallucinating? Didn't he mention wires last time? The difference between me and cheap imitation magicians is that I keep my mouth shut. N no, you didn't. I I'm pretty sure that was a plot point. I know we took a little bit of a break, but like, I am like 100% certain this came up before. He even did like the weepy animation. I don't teach people tricks, but I will say this much, it's much harder than you think. Today's trial. I was thinking about this in court today. I've got a favor to ask you for you. Anything for you, sweetie. Be friends with the other performers in the circus. Fabulous, a great joke. Why would I be friends with a bunch of hacks like them? But... I've won on the world stage. I won the International Grand Prix. International Grand Prix? Performers should always look to perform on the world stage. The performers at this circus are completely and utterly devoid of ambition. That is something that I simply cannot tolerate. Ambition, huh? Something about what Max said just now rings true to my ears. Let's ask about the Grand Prix, since it opened up. Oh my, my sweeties want to hear all about the Grand Prix, don't they? To be honest, though, I've told this story like a hundred times already, so it's a bit boring. We're sorry to make you tell it again. You must not have heard me. I am really sick of telling this story. What can you do? I'm Maximilian Galactica. I suppose I could tell it again. 
Voila! Here, take a look at this. I just happen to have a picture from the Grand Prix with me. Just look at that fabulous stage. Hmm. Right, chat? I'm like, I know it's been a long time since I tried this game, but I'm like, immediately, I'm like, I swear we saw Max. There's no way I mistook somebody other than Max. And then, like, immediately in this picture, there's a bust of Max here holding cards that we didn't see earlier. Hmm. As well as the big trophy itself, which we didn't really find. Interesting. That is the first stage that I ever flew on. I flew right over the audience. The crowd erupted into applause. At that time, I thought to myself that I could die right then and... Right then and die a happy man. I'll never forget how I felt that night. The emotions. The acclaim. Wow. <clears throat> By the way... I think everyone who is a performer should get to experience that feeling. I just wish I could explain that to the other people in the circus. That's incredible, Max. I want a trophy, too. Hey, Nick. How about you buy me a trophy? That's not how you earn a trophy, Maya. My sweeties. You can have this picture of my triumph. Just make sure you show it to all the other members of the circus. Look and learn. That's what you should tell them. Learn how to get thrown in jail. Grand Prix photo added to the court record. Okay, so now I think with this, I can avoid coming back here later for a while. I'm gonna examine the offices to see if anything new happens. Lately, they've been holding huge events at the Gatewater. Seems like they've really become a top-class hotel. I wonder if that bellboy would remember us. Charlie, a quite decorative plant. Nick, you've been watering the plant every day, right? Been thinking about watering it too. Maya, we don't want to drown poor Charlie. We get bigger! Does she want the office to look like a tropical rainforest or something? Poster, the newest member of the Steel Samurai universe. You know about the new Steel Samurai movie they're making, don't you, Nick? Yeah, I heard that they're making a movie starring the new cast. It's already out. Critics say, time to commit Harry Carey if you miss this action, action epic. You don't say. You know, that the star will win this year's Hero of Heroes Grand Prix. Uh -huh. Alright, already. I'll go see the movie. Yay, let's hurry and wrap this up so we can see it. Okay. We got an additional dialogue with her there. Oops. Meant to go to circus entrance. December 29th, very big circus, circus entrance. You hear that? Sounds like two people arguing. All right, let's do it. Are you ready? Y yes. Oh, uh, oh, wait. Would you whining? Let's get this a shot already. All right, let's go. Row, row, row your boat. Row, row, row your boat. What are you doing? Gently down the stream. Come on, you know that. I'm trying my best, but Trillo, this just isn't going to work. Do you enjoy saying dumb things? You're going to have to be on your own someday. You can't handle something as simple as this. What are you going to do then? Hello, Ben. Hello to you too, Trillo. What are you doing here? Can't you see we're on a secret crash training course? I'm sorry. Secret crash training? Whoa. Yes. Trillo wouldn't give up until I said we'd try out his idea for a new routine. So, we were trying to sing it around for our new friend Triloquism Act. In a round? You can really do that? That's incredible! See? See? Even they were surprised by the idea. Told you. They're not the only ones. Even surprised me with your idea. Once we get the grip on the basics, it's just a matter of practice. Y you y th th think so? Oh, I almost forgot. I want to just give this back to you. Ah, there it is. I'd have got this ring. It's time to take one more shot at Regina. Oh, uh, this... I'm still disappointed every time I hear it. I mean, I guess I'll talk to you about today's trial. Um... I know that you already testified in court today. 
you want to talk about what we saw, right? Yes. Well, at first we thought it was the old man. Just look at his walk and how he acted, right, Ben? Huh? Oh, oh yeah. That's right. But then we said hello and didn't even get a reply. Not to mention he was draped in those gaudy symbols. What would you have thought if he wasn't wearing those symbols? Hmm. What do you think, Ben? What? Oh, um... I would have thought it was the Ringmaster. Hmm. Something just isn't adding up here. Wonder who they really saw. Marriage. I regret selecting this topic immediately. I was hoping I could ask you about Regina. I'm completely serious about her. That's why I'm waiting for her even now. Ugh. Really? That's so sweet. No, no, it's not. It's really creepy. But if you really wanted to see Regina, shouldn't you check out the ten? Ha! Huh. You haven't got a clue about things, do you, sweetheart? Huh? Waiting like this is part of being in love. How so? If you had a clue, you wouldn't know that waiting is such sweet, wonderful torture. Your body aches for your partner's love. It's one of the best parts. It's just really creepy. I'm just... I'm trying not to let it bother me, but it's such a major plot point in this thing. It's not like a one-off thing. It literally comes up all the time in this. It's just really, really creepy. He's like double her age, and she's really young, and he's presumably been working with her for a while. Oh, it's so creepy. Um, yeah, I, I knew that. Poor Maya. She's so red, she looks like a vine-ripe tomato. Let's ask about ventriloquism, which also feels like a mistake. So how is this new routine working out? Will you two just take a chill pill already? Our routine's a secret. We're gonna take the ventriloquism world by storm. It'll be a real revolution. Sounds incredible. Let me make one thing clear. We're not gonna take on the world just because that jerk said we should. That jerk? Ex Galactica. The former should aim for the world. Who does he think he is? Trillo. Seemed to be really fired up about all this. He needs to realize that he isn't the only one who can conquer the world stage. You're right. You're right. Out of all the problems that got someone killed, it wasn't predatory love, apparently. Anyway, sorry about that. Mark my words, our Triloquist will win the Grand Prix. Oops, put a little twang on his accent by accident. You're the man now, doll? Oh my gosh, how old is this game? Oh my gosh, we're doing a Sean Connery reference? You're the man now, dog? Oh my gosh, when did that come out? Hold on, chat. Fact check in real time. Holy, I haven't heard that in like eons. Like, it would. <laughs> well, this the site version of it is from 2001. Wow, that is that is a long time since I've heard that phrase. Let alone like sort of references to it and stuff like that. Yeah, because I think that was it. A I think it was a film, right? That came out in about 2000 ish. That is quite something. Row, 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 your boat will be the key to a glorious victory. Um, let's rain on your parade. No more mature song be best. Hey, you gotta start somewhere, right? Then dot dot dots. Don't screw this up. You gotta be a part of this too. I'm gonna present him our badge just to see what happens. Do you mind taking a look at this? Oh, we got the default one. Does he have any rep responses to the Grand Prix photo? Oh. So there's there's nothing I could get from him at this time? Wow, that, that was, uh... That was time we spent. <laughs> Let's go to the plaza briefly.
Her milkshake brings all the boys to the yard was all for a friend. Oh, if that happened at some point, I didn't notice. I'm aware of what that is, but I don't recall where that is. Unless it hasn't happened yet. If Unless you just mean in general. But yeah, that was big oof. <laughs> it's like, I was like, wow, I, I feel like it was dated when this game came out, right? Hold on. Justice for all. What year did you come out? Let's find out. We're fact checking in real time. We'll let the game load the next dialogue in the meantime. Oof. Well, I I guess to be sort of fair, the version of Japan, there was a version of it that came out in 2002. The US didn't see a release until 2007, though, so that was kind of a big oof. So it was sort of topical, I guess, technically, in its first release. But definitely not by the time the US version came out. Gumshu said, oh, it's you two. You look like you just got hit by a truck. Shouldn't you get some rest? Uh, I'm taking a rest right now, pal. I've been listening to some crazy clown's life story. Miss Von Karma told me to come down here and do this for her. Yeah, I figured as such. Let me tell you something, pal. Listen to that old clown sucks all your energy. I was going to say, ways to motivate you to play the game when every character complains in-universe that the other character is insufferable, and you know, inevitably, at some point, you two will have to sit there and interrogate the stupid clown. It's, the, it's certainly a way to build up the motivation. Every time he's done talking, looks at you like you should be doing something. Um, he's waiting for you to laugh at his jokes. I know that, pal. Do you have any idea how much your face hurts if you fake laughing that much? Francisca really set you up bad this time, didn't she? If you ask me, she should be listening to Mo herself. No way, pal. You're not going to get me to backbite a woman with a whip. No way. Just arrest her. I... Also... Why is it... I... It... I'm slightly... Con okay, his expression is hitting me a bit weird. He's like... I'm like trying to match his face right now. He's like giving like the grr teeth, right? But then like it's like it like it's limp <laughs> one side. It's like uh But then it's like it's all exposed at the same time. That's a very awkward looking mouth is what I'm getting at. I don't know if it's a combination of the angle or the fact that all the teeth are visible. The way it looks, like if I if I put my hand over his eyes and nose, I would have assumed he was looking slightly to the left of the audience based off of the position of the mouth, which looks very odd on the rest of the face. But anyway, enough of that uh, slight aside. Why are you defending her? Prosecutor Von Karma's always got her eyes on us. Love the open mouth. And every time, you definitely don't want her to show up. Poof! There she is! He does have a habit, I guess, of always talking out of one side of his mouth, I suppose. Did he have a stroke at some point, Chad? I'm actually getting more concerned about Gumshoe now that I'm noticing these things. Don't show up! 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 Looks like she's wound him up pretty tight. She's directly above us as we speak. Huh? How's that possible? According to the clown, the culprit jumped from here and disappeared into the sky. And that's what happened. It would mean the killer passed right by this window, pal. Oh, I see. Who lives in that room? Behind the window up there? The acrobat's got his room up on the third floor, it seems. Pretty soon, Miss Von Karma's gonna start her investigation up there. So don't get any ideas going up to the acrobat's room. Got it, pal? Yeah, we were already there earlier, though. Ooh, Francisca Von Karma. Once she's done with her investigation, I think I'll go up there and check it out. I don't think anything new is here.
Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna ignore most of this. I don't think this is relevant. I guess we'll go to Moe's room. Let's regret life choices here. December 29th, Legend House, first floor, Moe's room. Moe's not here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> small, mer small mercies, chat. <laughs> like, thank you. Uh, I was contemplating if I wanted to redo his voice or not. I'm thinking about it. If he was here, you would have been able to tell even before you stepped into his room. I'm sure you would have heard him laughing away. I'm not imitating his laugh. You know the ahas by now. What do you think he's laughing at when he's all by himself? We thought he was just thinking up new jokes. Hmm. Must really love his work. Yeah, so none of this is different. So I'm gonna move forward. So we clearly need to go to wherever the people were arguing. Let's go back to circus entrance and then go to Big Top and figure out where the argument's being held. So let's go to the Big Top itself. Huh? Where's Regina? I don't know. But if she's with that tiger, I don't want to find out. Let's hurry up and get out of here. <laughs> Nick, you're kind of a chicken, aren't you? No, 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 no. I'm just, um, allergic to wild tigers. December 29th, Big Top Cafeteria. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, Chad, I found him. I feel disappointed now. I feel just so instantly disappointed. <laughs> no idea, Chad. The disappointment is immeasurable. I need I need to steady myself, Chad. Hold on. Let me take a drink. <laughs> Ah, uh, right. Welcome to the wonderful, the fabulous, the cafeteria. Yikes. He's in an awfully good mood. <laughs> the, the opposite of me at the moment. Reminded of why this is one of your least favorite chapters of the game. It does really drag on the side characters. I think normally, if, if there was this much focus on side characters, it's normally not a bad thing because it makes them a bit more memorable like when you go to replay the game it's just that like every side character is just like heinously unlikable like it's actually like insane how heinously unlikable most of these characters are like i feel like they tout like they they basically just put a list of like professions adjectives and gimmicks and they basically ablibbed all of them and they picked the most annoying combination possible. I swear. Some of these characters are just like, ugh. I'm also not entirely sure what the whole carrot thing is. I don't know if there's an explanation for the carrots at any point. Why he has a carrot sticking out of the mouth. It mentioned before, you know, potentially it was part of his act. But like... I don't know if it has a special meaning or not. Alright, you know what time it is. Riddle time. No. <laughs> Why does everyone cry when they eat Mexican pizza? Why do I feel like this is about to be really offensive? Chad, if this is about to be really offensive, I'm just going to say, insert something offensive here. I, I, I will not answer this right away. I'm just letting you know, chat. I don't like how this is being set up. I'm feeling, I'm feeling uncomfortable as the streamer. Why does everyone cry when they eat Mexican pizza, Mo? I swear, you better give me an actual real answer. Um, um, come on, you can answer this. It's easy. Because cafeteria Mexican pizza is possibly a weapon of bowel destruction. Oof. Buzz. Wrong. Try again. Okay, what do you think, girly? Um, oh, I got it. Okay, what's your answer? Because they're in the cafe teary eye. Exactly. It's an incredibly sad place, that cafe. Oof, okay. I mean, it didn't go the route of Terranigma. We'll, we'll give it that. It didn't go the route of Terranigma. So, we, that was... It was bad. It was just bad in a different sense. So I'm not I'm not going to give them full credit for it, but that could have gone much worse. Could have gone much worse. Uh-huh. 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 I did it. 
What's going on? He's being too nice. Uh, Guess we'll ask about today's trial. Today's been a real crazy day, hasn't it? You're telling me. I didn't think it was going to be so tough. Tough? Yeah. It's a tough crowd. That's what you call a crowd that refuses to laugh. It, it's because you're in a courtroom, you idiot. <laughs> I'm just like, Mo, please sleep forever. Exactly in parameter. I'm just like, his outfit is smiling. I am not smiling. For instance, there's such a tough crowd this morning. I had to smash watermelons. How... I'm afraid to ask how that sentence flowed into the conclusion of the sentence. Like, I know there, we, we talked about this before. We know if A, then B. I'm not following how it went A to B. This is like A to Q. Like, how, how did we get to watermelons? Why are watermelons involved in this statement? Hmm. I told them all a great story and even greater jokes. No one busted out laughing. Even used the fame no shoes, no shirt, no service joke. Exactly. How could you not laugh at stunning comedy like that? I'm afraid to ask him what he witnessed. Are you 100% sure about your testimony today? Yeah, oh dear, indeed. I saw what I saw, I swear. That creep just... flew through the air. It wasn't exactly flying, per se. It's more like floating. Still, the wet of his face made me positive it was Max. I don't see a psych lock. He must be telling the truth. Alright, well, let's present the badge just because we can. He apparently doesn't know anything about it. Alright, what happens if we show the Grand Prix photo? Ah, oh, not this picture! He showed it to you guys, too. Huh? You've seen it as well? Well, you know what they say about Maximilian Galactica. He really gets around. Ah! Ah-ha-ha! Ah-ha! Ah-ha-ha! Ah-ha-ha! Ah-ha! <laughs> oh, yeah. He didn't just show me the picture. What do you mean? He showed me his bus, too. Let me tell you, that thing is enormous. It's in the picture, I think. He make us worship it every day. He made us bow to his greatness. He got a big bust? And can he not lie about it? <laughs> I don't get it, says Dango, pretty much. It's like, I think the, the supposed, I, I feel like something is lost in translation with some of the jokes. Like, I feel like it was supposed to be like a planet, like a planet is round kind of thing, but it doesn't quite work with his name. I, yeah, I, I feel like some of this has to be like translation issues and, or they intentionally made it terrible. I'm not, I'm not sure you get to pick one. I wouldn't mind hearing more about Max's bust. Not that I'm into that sort of thing. Oh, jeez, Phoenix. Alright, so now that we have the photo, we can make plot progress here. And that's why I went to the other place first. Max's bus should be on that small table over there, which we already know wasn't there because we looked there yesterday. There's nothing over there. Really? Oh, yeah. Hmm. When was it? Say about five days ago, all of a sudden. Bus disappeared. It disappeared? You want to see it? There's a photo on the bulletin board over there. Heard this game specifically was rushed in translation. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know how much this would help some of the characters, though. Max just had to put the picture up. Hmm. Hey, this thing is really cool. Nick, Nick, put someone to make a bust of me. Sure, as long as I'm not paying for it. Oh. Max G. Bust. Bronze statue taken from the cafeteria before the crime. Added to the court record. Is there anything else that's changed about this place? Nope, nothing's changed that I could see. I wonder if he's actually thinking about this. Or if he's setting up a bad joke. Nope, nope, I'm drawing a blank here. Quiet Mo is a good Mo in my book. I love that even Phoenix is done with him. Like, he's just checked out, Chad. I guess there really aren't any other things that have changed, huh? Well, there is this one teensy tiny thing that does seem different. Tell us, tell us. Let's ask what changed. Well, 
the morning of the crime over on the bulletin board. This piece of paper was posted front and center. Piece of paper? It's torn, so I don't know what it said, but I can see its title. Yikes! It says, to the murderer. M -m 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 murderer Yep, that's what it says. But the rest of it has been ripped off. I don't know who posted it. Um, when did you find this? Morning before the murder. Before the murder? Yeah, the ringmaster was killed the night after this paper was discovered. world posted this thing note added to the court record posted in the cafeteria on the day of the crime then torn states to the murderer nick i think we better follow up on this important lead Uh, so just what Imperimeter is saying, apparently, this version of the game, uh, fixed a lot of the original issues, and apparently there were a lot of different, uh, word choice and spelling errors that are no longer in this version, apparently. Interesting. The more you know. Uh, do we do anything else? Apparently it even had phrases like, quote, the miracle never happen. As an example. But anyway. Uh, let's go forward and I guess go to the ringmaster's room. Max and the ringmaster had their talk in this room. That could have been when the ringmaster put on Max's costume and went outside. Why'd he do that anyway? Was it really that cold or something? Hmm. I'm trying to figure out what the game actually wants me to do. So we found out about the bust. But where do I go next is the question that I'm asking myself. Hmm. So obviously, like, we have to present this information to somebody. Do I just go back to Max himself? Because I'm not seeing anything that would really advance the dialogue otherwise. I mean, I guess I could ask him, but I doubt I'll get anything here. Yeah, no information here. Take a look at the bus briefly. Alright, so no dialogue update here. So Triloquist is useless. So that that's about expectation. So now if I present these... There we go, new dialogue. Do you know anything about this note? The morning of the murder. It was posted on the wall in the cafeteria. I do know all about that note. When I read it, my heart certainly skipped a beat. Your heart skipped a beat? While I was enjoying my morning tea, Big Master and company entered the room. And company. I guess it wasn't really a company. It's just the ringmaster and my sweetie pie. Ugh. Please, please refer to her as Regina. When the ringmaster read the note. He turned it incredible bright red. All of a sudden, he tore it off the wall and shoved it into the pocket of his coattail. 
Oh, you mean the thing that you wouldn't let me investigate earlier, even though I definitely looked at that in the first day of investigation and definitely would have saved some time investigating? Do you mean that tailcoat pocket? Okay. <laughs> right, chat? Okay. Really? Out of curiosity, when the world was written on that thing? Let's see. Uh huh. Oh, I don't want to steal the fun from my sweeties. Go find it on your own. I'm sure you could find it somewhere. You might want to ask my sweetie pie princess. I really don't like that we have to basically go through all these rooms just to go back to the room I literally just came from. That is so annoying. So I'm going to go investigate this again, even though I did this yesterday in the game timeline. Hey, do you see that? Yes, that's the that was the first thing I looked at when I looked at the tailcoat. This is a scrap of paper shoved into the pocket of the tailcoat. You know, I got a feeling I know what that is. Is it because they literally told you, Phoenix? I bet that's the other half of the note that Mo gave us. Now let's hurry up and check this thing out, Nick. I knew it. It fits perfectly with the other piece. What does it say? What does it say? To the murder. I have conclusive evidence of what took place. Meet me at 10 p.m. tonight at the Lodging House Plaza. Hmm. Tonight at 10 p.m.? That's when the murder took place. Now we need to find out who called out the Ringmaster. Note updated in the court record. Torn by a Ringmaster found in his tail coat pocket. Okay. Let's try leaving. Oh, nothing happened. Um, go to cafeteria. What? Mo's gone. There's a message on the bulletin board. I'm hungry, so I'm off to have some hamburgers. Love, Mo. Mmm, hamburger. Just thinking about it is making me hungry. All of a sudden, I need a burger bad. All of a sudden, I need a new partner. Bad. Oof, but true. Oof, but true. Let's go to Big Top. Uh... I think we need to come over here. Gumshoe's still here. We're at the lodging house now. Hey, Detective Gumshoe. I'm sure you did a, a good job as usual. Well... I am done with the investigation of the acrobat, finally. But with Miss Von Karma. Beep, beep, chat. Beep, 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 beep. Nick, what is that? That beeping sound? Hmm. Miss Von Karma. Huh? Every time I hear that sound, she's usually not very far behind. Some sort of pager or something? No mind, pal. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here, quick. See ya, pal. I didn't know that Gumshoe could run that fast. So much for being a flatfoot. Never seen a grown man so afraid of a girl still in her teens. Well, let's go inside. It's freezing out here. The winds is biting as, ow! It's biting his lashes from a whip. Von, Von Karma. She really did appear and commit battery right in front of all these witnesses. Right, chat? Unprovoked assault and battery. <laughs> Threatening with the whip and then actually using it. It was a real battle today in court, wasn't it? Mr. Phoenix Wright. Did you have to jump out and scare us like that? Oh, what can I do for you? Tomorrow will be the day. The day my dream finally comes true. You mean the story of my defeat at your hands? Making the national news? <laughs> national news? You possess such a small sense of scale. The global news, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Your miserable plight will be known internationally. I think she might be overestimating the importance of a win by just a smidge. Her finger points. Tomorrow's trial. Miss Von Karma, here's you got your hands onto something big, huh? Huh, I'm amazed you picked up on that much. Anyone could. Couldn't hide that look of victory with ten paper bags on your head. I've got conclusive evidence. 
and a conclusive witness. Need any more hints? A conclusive witness? Must mean the acrobat, right? I'm putting in the summons for him to be called as a witness as we speak. It's the final nail in your coffin, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Yeah, 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 I get it already. You want to beat and destroy me. Can't worry about her. I'm gonna try and find out more information myself. Revenge in quotations is the next topic. Why do you keep giving Nick the evil eye? It doesn't matter if you prove the defendant guilty tomorrow. Nothing will be able to bring your dad back. My dad? You must mean the esteemed Manfred von Karma. Of course, your dad. I know you miss him. Enough out of you. One more word and you'll get a mouthful of whip. Now, when did I ever bring my father's name in this? Or any other conversation? Phoenix double exclamation marks us. Then, and what's this revenge thing you're talking about? You wouldn't understand, Mr. Phoenix, right? I have to see him again. One more time. What is he, like Voldemort? Why, why weren't they just saying Edgeworth's name? Him? I'm sure you know to whom I refer. Miles Edgeworth. What? Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth? M -m -m Miles uh, 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 Edgeworth. Miles Edgeworth is the next topic. Miles Edgeworth? Why would you even bring him up? You haven't forgotten, have you? Do you know who it was that trained the gifted prosecutor? Miles Edgeworth? Manfred von Karma? Exactly right. It was my papa. That means that, Ma that Edgeworth was... Right again. Miles was like a little brother to me. Huh? Little brother? But Edgeworth and Nick are the same age. Edgeworth. The man who inspired me to become an attorney. I fought against him in a few cases. But a little after that case was over, he vanished. It's your fault he's gone. I like how that's like the first time they, they spoke about him like leaving and giving an explanation. Like they just keep saying like he's gone, but not like why he was gone from their perspective. And they made it also ambiguous enough that it sounded like he was dead, which is kind of messed up, honestly. It's kind of messed up that they get the plot writers. Huh? It's the truth, isn't it, Mr. Phoenix Wright? I... I... Nick? What does she mean? Edgeworth's death. Okay, there we go. Now we're actually talking about it after alluding to it for like three cases now. Took a while. We got there eventually. Edgeworth was never quite the same after that case. And then, with the case after that one... He never set foot into court again. And then one day, he just vanished. All he left was a simple note at the prosecutor's office. Prosecutor's Mile Edgeworth chooses death. That was one year ago. It's a few months after you left to go back home. Mr. Edgeworth, he's... dead? I don't believe it. He's still alive, I'm sure of it. Somewhere in this world, he's still alive. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death. Of course he did. You ruined his reputation as a prosecutor. You effectively killed the prosecutor in him. Just like your victory muddied the honorable name Von Karma. I'm going to find him. And then, I'm going to teach him his rightful police with my own two hands. N nick um, about Mr. Edgeworth. Maya, I already told you this once. Don't make me do it again. Don't bring up his name in front of me again, okay? N nick Miss Von Karma? What? I don't know if you're God's gift to prosecutors or not, but I've had about enough of you. Him too. What? What in the world happened? Hmm. This dog is all bark and no bite. He's already been defeated. Regardless, I have nothing to inform you two of today. 
Tomorrow will be the greatest courtroom battle this country has ever seen. Nick? Let's go. Need to talk with the performer on the third floor. I'm sorry I brought it up, Nick. Let's go to Acro's room. Ah, oh, right, this character. December 29th, lodging house, third floor, Acro's room. Looks like he has a cockatiel on the right, and I'm not sure what the green bird is on the left. You must be Phoenix Wright. Yes, pleased to meet you. I'm Ken Dingling. Ken Dingling? What? <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess it could be a parakeet. It's weird because those birds are actually two very different sizes, which I think really confuses me because I've seen them before, like in real life. <laughs> so it's like, you know, basically cockatiels in particular are rather large. They're basically double the size of a parakeet. But in this, they look the same size. So I don't know if they just don't know that they are different sizes or if they are supposed to be different birds. But I mean, typically when I see like the yellow crown or crest or whatever you want to call it on the head of the cockatiel with the red cheek. I mean, that's the telltale sign. That's what they look like. But here at the circus, everyone just calls me Acro. And Delink. Oh, that's such a that's such a bad name. <laughs> just hmm. We'll talk about his pun name in a bit, it in a little bit, I guess. Hmm. Mr. Acro. Um, how do you know my name? The detective told me. He said you definitely show up here. Acro, you're a member of the circus as well. That's right. I mainly performed on the tightrope or the flying tra uh, trap trapeze. I was like, I had to think about that for a moment. My brain did not want to process that word. But nowadays, all I perform in is my wheelchair. It's kind of messed up. talk about the very big circus I guess Acro why did you join the circus when I was a kid my parents failed miserably at business then one night they decided to run away from it all without me Dot, 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 double exclamation mark. I'm assuming his name is supposed to be like the Ringling Circus. Because I've noticed a couple names in this are references to like actual circus names, for example. So I'm assuming that's what it's supposed to be. I don't remember or not, but I mean, normally I think like the Ringling Brothers. So I'm assuming he has a brother. I honestly don't remember in the plot, to be honest with you. But I have a feeling it's related to the note we saw earlier. The only person who was willing to take my parents' place was the ringmaster. The ringmaster took such incredible care of me. He was truly a lifesaver. It seems like the ringmaster was truly a saint. He was. That's why I decided to do something very important. I decided I would devote my entire life finding a way to repay him. And now, look how someone repaid him for all the good in his life. It's such a shame. Sometimes, I think that he was almost too kind. Base Chantora looks guilty, says Calvisham, pretty much. Look at him, wistfully looking away, not explaining what's on his mind. I'm waiting for, like, the Quadra Psylocke chat at any moment now. 
Perhaps he was too kind to his performers. Perhaps he was too kind to his daughter. No. No, I don't think he was, given how many people are trying to date her. Hmm. I wonder if he spoiled Regina. Regina's so cute. She's truly a princess. Truly a princess. Are you sure that's a good thing? Um. Hmm. Do I detect a hint of a grudge against Regina? <laughs> Let's ask about the wheelchair, which feels kind of awkward. Um. I'm sorry to ask, but why are you in a wheelchair? The nerves in my legs were badly damaged. And you can't walk now. I can't even stand now. And since I live on the third floor, I can't even leave this building by myself. That's awful. The accident happened during... Oh, excuse me. The accident happened during an acrobatic session, right? I got it. The birds murdered the ringmaster. I mean... Possibly. We'll go, um... Uh-oh. Here they come. How many? Is it gonna be three or four? Oh, only three. Darn, chat, I overestimated by one. Xylox. It doesn't look... Seem like Acro's injuries were acrobatic in nature. What's on your mind, Mr. Wright? Well, exactly when were you injured? It's been almost six months since I was hurt. Injured my legs during practice. Six months ago? When the world went on this, went on at the circus then? Let's ask about what happened. Stop by yesterday and notice you weren't in your room. I was at the hospital all day yesterday. Ah, you went there for rehabilitation. What about the murder? Of course, I knew about it. I spoke with the police before they allowed me to go to the hospital. Before I got the call from the prosecutor, I was convinced that it was all a dream. Huh? I just couldn't believe it when I saw what I saw. What you saw? Jeez, that sounded really ominous. Let's ask what he witnessed. What did you see, Acro? That night, I was in bed sleeping when I heard a huge sound coming from below my window. I see. The scene of the crime was right below your window. That's when I looked out the window. What did you see? He was flying straight up into the air. He? Maximilian Galactica. What? That's what I thought he'd say. You're absolutely positive that it was Max you saw flying. I'm absolutely sure. There's no doubt in my mind. N Nick? Let's present him a couple of things to see if we get any information. Let's show him the attorney badge. What do you think of this? I'm sorry. But in my present physical condition, I don't really know much about what goes on outside of this room. Oh, we're sorry. Don't worry about it. No need to apologize. I'll show him the note. Hmm, what's this? That's what we want to know. It was posted in the cafeteria the morning before the murder. Ooh, the birds flew away. Serious faces on, chat. In the... cafeteria. Well, what happened? It suddenly looks incredibly serious. If it's got something to do with her, then you should go straight to the source. Her? Regina, ask her about it. Hmm. Show him the Grand Prix photo. Maximilian Galactica, right? You have to forgive me, but I try not to think about him. Akra won't even look at it. Looks like something is really weighing on him. Alright, so nothing more to do here. We're gonna slowly make our way back to the other entrance. So now we're in very big circus, big top.
Uh, got a bad feeling about this. Rawr. Ah, Nick! Wonderful. Today's special must be Phileo Phoenix. Stay, stay heal. Oh, Maya, Nick, it's you guys. I'm sorry. I guess I made a mistake. A, a mistake? Yeah, a little one. Welcome, Granite. Hope you're doing well. I was thinking of teaching whatever primate was out there a lesson. I was expecting more of a monkey than a human. A monkey? Let's ask about Russellberry. It's a pity about what happened to the Ringmaster. Dad? Everyone loved him, didn't they? He must have been quite a man. He was! I love my dad so much! Hate to say it, but... Doesn't seem all that broken up about her father. That's why I feel so lonely. I won't be able to see him for a while. For a while? Yeah. When Leon died, I talked with my dad and he told me that when someone dies, they just become a star in the heavens. A, a star? That means my dad is looking down on me from the sky. Oh, sweetie. He's not... <laughs> That's in the wrong direction. That's why I love the night so much. I can see everyone who's gone. When someone dies, they just become a star in the heavens. That's kind of sweet. But I bet th there's no way that Maya believes that. What do you mean there's no way I believe that? Do you think that one day I'll be a star too? Of course. You really think so? Yeah, you will. I think. I got a feeling that everyone's doing great up there in the sky. I wonder if everything's all right with Regina. No, 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 there's something clearly wrong with her. But we're not going to address that in this game, perhaps. Money the monkey. Just to go back and clear something up, why'd you want to teach Money a lesson? Because he's a meanie. He's got something that means a lot to me. Something that means a lot to you. Must be something shiny, right? Um, actually... It's a stage costume. It's got lots of spangles. It's really beautiful. You should see it. We should. When the costume gets hit by the spotlight, it dazzles. Hey, Mr. Attorney. Huh? You saw that monkey. You'd get my costume back for me, wouldn't you? It's really important to me. Ugh, our options are gladly, but of course, I'll get it for you. I wish I could say no. Leave it all up to us. Guess there's no turning down that request. Yeah, thanks, game. Yay, you're really gonna do it? Well, let's see what she says about the attorney badge. She's not good at figuring things out, apparently. Yeah, right, let's present the note, because that's probably plot-related. Regina, have you ever seen this before? Uh, I know what this is. Really? Well, it was in my pocket for a while. It was in your pocket? This piece of paper. It was in your pocket? Hmm. Guess I noticed it was in there around breakfast time. Breakfast time? Yeah. We take Acro his breakfast in the morning. That's when I also take out the trash in his room. Then I go to the cafeteria and eat my own breakfast. That's when you realized the piece of paper was in your pocket. Yup, but since I'm not a murderer, I just figured it belonged in someone else's pocket. And then what? I wonder if the person who lost it was in trouble, so... You didn't put it on the bulletin board in the cafeteria, did you? I did. Stuck it up there. How'd you know? Hmm. So it was Regina who put it up there. When did this happen? Um... The morning of the murder, I think. That explains a lot. I wonder who wrote this. Found in Regina's pocket on the morning of the crime. Note updated in the court record. Hmm. Nothing here. Again, it feels like I'm just kind of aimlessly wandering between some of these rooms looking for a character. <laughs> Something smells fantastic. So we know it can't be Mo. Wait, I know what it is. It's burgers. 
Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Bistro de Cirque, aka the cafeteria. I'm so sad we came across him again. Hmm, it smells so good in here. Those burgers look great. She's drooling like she's some sort of crazed burger monster. Hopefully you're doing well, Grenadine. My burgers are the best. Juicy meat, toasted bun, special sauce. They're absolutely irresistible to anyone with a hankering for a burger. One bite will send you to hamburger heaven. I bet. I can tell by the smell. Whoa. I'm getting hungry too. These burgers must have some kind of special power. Oh, I can ask about the very big circus. Now that the ringmaster's gone, what are you going to do? That's all I thought about the past two days. I don't love Russell. You've heard Acro's story, haven't you? Like how he was adopted when he was younger? He's calmed down a bit now, but he was livid when he heard about the murder. Acro was so upset he said he couldn't go on. He was that upset? Yeah, he was. Anyway, I gave it some thought. Maybe I should give up on trying to be a half-baked clown. Oh, please. I beg of you. I'm thinking of trying on the ringmaster's shoes. No, be a chef. Leave the comedy business. I beg of you. What? Really? Max would still be an issue, though. Max? Maybe a bit mean and hard to work with, but hard to argue is importance. He's probably the reason the circus is still around. Not what he says is right. Mo. All that's left is see if everyone can get over the tragedy. You know. The tragedy, you know. What is he talking about? Let's ask about get over it. Get over what tragedy, Mo? Huh? Don't worry about it. It's nothing. Nothing at all. He must mean the tragic death of the ringmaster, right? Huh. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You're right, girly. Dang, dang, dang. Correct a mundo. Doesn't he mean ding? Mo. I mean no disrespect here, but... Are you lying to us? Ah! No, not at all. What makes you think that? Oh, how... I'm waiting for the locks to pop up. Just the way you said if everyone can get over the tragedy seemed a bit strange. Not like you were talking about something from a long time ago. <laughs> oh, I'm right, aren't I? There we go. Hmm. Now we're getting closer to the truth. It was about six months ago. It's just a little accident. Give me a break. Us old men have accidents. I wear big pants for a reason. Six months ago, eh? Hmm. So we have two characters where I can't move forward with them. So I guess I'll try going to Moe's room. To find the monkey to get an outfit which will maybe... advance the plot in some way. Let's go back in here. Now we're in Moe's room on the first floor. Hmm. Moe's not here. What's that? I hear something. Stop it, Nick. You're scaring me. Ook ook, says Money the monkey. Nick, it's Money. The monkey's holding something. That's it. That's the thing that means a lot to Regina, remember? All right, time to take on this monkey, attorney style. Give it back, monkey brain. Stay or ooh ooh ah, scratch scratch. I'm gonna say give it back. Give it back, monkey brain. Ook ook, chat. It means a lot to Regina. A remail wouldn't make a little girl cry. Ah! Ah! I got assaulted by the monkey. Tried to have a man-to-man -man talk with him. I really did. You know, man-to-man -man isn't really accurate. It's more like man-to-monkey. Nick, you... You... I swiped it while money was distracted. Wow, you're really on the ball today, Nick. Let me see it. Let me see it. Huh? You can see it from, from where you are. You know what I mean. I really want to try on Regina's costume. Maybe then they'll take you in at the circus and I can get some peace and quiet. Oof. Hmm. What's the matter now? It doesn't fit me at all. Oh, well. This is time for you to lay off the burgers. Ooh. 
Low blow, Phoenix. Not to mention, it doesn't look like something any girl I know would actually wear. Stage costume. A shiny spangled vest. It's not Maya size at all. Stage costume added to the court record. Alright, so we're making progress. I'm gonna go back into the entrance, which requires like 5 million presses to get back here. Let's present the costume. Here you go, Regina. Yay, thank you! You really got it back for me! Don't mention it. I love you, Mr. Attorney! We blush. It's... nothing. No wonder guys melt and mush in front of this girl. Ew. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just straight up repulsed. I'm just like, oh wait, this is this has some weird connotations, chat. I'm just like, I, I don't know about that. I'm gonna go with a big, big frowny face on that. Also, it kind of looks like her face is melting. <laughs> I guess the best way to put it. Something about the way her eyes are positioned, they just look wrong. It's kind of one of those things where, like, I guess the best way to put it is, like, if you look at the edges of eyes, normally the, the edges of the eye, like, if you were to run a finger around the face, will roughly line up with about the middle of the ear. So the fact that the middle of her eye is, like, near her earlobe is kind of weird. So I don't... I. It, it's like her face is drooping, is the best way to put it. Oh, they really need to teach these people about proportions and characters. Hey, Regina. The costume is yours, right? I tried it on, but it didn't fit me. See, like, there I think it's okay-ish. I just don't know why that image in particular it looks so much lower. Huh? This costume... This isn't mine, it was Leon's. Leon's? You know, the lion she told us about. Oh, the one that someone killed. Let's ask about Leon again. Leon, he was killed, wasn't he? That's right, my dad killed him. Why? Well, Leon did something really bad during practice. During practice? Leon was sitting down, then he opened his mouth. You know, gah... Uh-huh, uh-huh. He usually, when he did that, I put my head into his mouth. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Wait, you put your head into a lion's mouth? I sure did. People in the crowd always love seeing me do that. They'd always start screaming. I'm sure they were screaming because they love seeing you do that? Anyways. What was that? Oh, excuse me, wrong person speaking. Anyways, what was the bad thing? Oh, yeah. Leon bit someone during that practice. Regina, everything was all right though, right? No, it wasn't all right. That was the problem. My dad was incredibly angry. That's when Leon... Yeah, that's when he became a star in the sky. Poor thing. The animal shows Lion shot by the ringmaster six months ago for biting a performer. Leon added to the court record. Well, that's kind of messed up. Uh... Oh yeah, we never looked at Acro's profile. Real name, Ken Dingling. Seriously injured both legs while training six months ago. Hmm. So we'll go to... Where was he even at? The cafeteria, I think? Okay. So we're going to present the Magatombo, since I think we have everything we need now. Get over it. Mo, please tell us what happened six months ago. What in the world went on at this circus? Oh, okay, okay, there's no need to look so scary when you ask me. Hey, look over here, some juicy burgers, let's eat this instead. Unfortunately, I'm more of a grilled chicken sandwich man myself. Oh my gosh, I'm identifying with Phoenix. I feel more concerned about myself now, Chad. I I am not a burger person. Uh actually, kinda got an idea what happened back then. Mo, you said something about an accident. This wouldn't happen to be the cause of the accident, would it? Alright, so we're gonna go to our profile. 
we're going to... Wait. Oh, Leon... Wait, this isn't... This isn't a profile? Why does Leon not have a profile? Oh, fine, we'll ask about Leon. Take that. Heard a little bit about it from Regina. Leon made a mistake during practice, right? How did you... I told him so many times. Shouldn't be doing such dangerous acts. Like putting her head inside the Leon's mouth, right? Yeah, but Regina believed in Leon. Believed so strongly the ringmaster went along. Never could say no to her. Out of curiosity, who was bitten? Come on, Mo. Don't clam up on me now. Who did Leon bite on the head? Well, um... I promised I wouldn't say anything. He promised. He's involved in this, too. He's involved, huh? Mo must be talking about... Mo, is this person you promised wouldn't say... You wouldn't say anything? Well, I mean, the only per the only person with six months in their description is Acro. I love that if we get this wrong, this is like three marks off of the bar, by the way. That's kind of brutal. Let's present Acro here. Take that. Must have been Acro, right? How, how did you... How'd you know? Don't worry about that, Mo. Getting to the bottom of this accident may help solve what happened to the ringmaster. No, no way. I need to know the truth about what happened to Russell. Please, tell me what you know. I'm sorry, Acro. Oof on that one, chat. Just making sure to rehydrate. There's a lot of text in this game. Unlock successful. So ask about get over it, as opposed to getting over it, where it's a big troll game. Just like you said, you know, the accident. Did someone die? No. Probably would have been better if he had. What? How would that have been better? He's still alive. When he got bit, he suffered massive brain damage. He'll never recover from the coma that he's in. Oma? All he does now is lie in bed at the hospital. And that's all he's ever going to be able to do. I see. How is he related to Acro? Oh. You know what? I'm vaguely recalling it. Is his name something stupid like Bat or something? Because they got to go with the Acrobat pun. I'm like vaguely recalling this now. He's his brother. Huh? The person who got bit was Acro's brother. But brother They were an acrobat team of brothers. Acro and Bat. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> it's like, yeah, never mind. I, I vaguely recall this now. Cute nicknames, I thought. Mm, it's something. Anyways, they were an incredible team. Put down together in their prime. Let's ask about Acro's brother. Acro the Bat, this game is old. Or that game is old, excuse me. You know what? I never played it, to be honest with you. It was one of those things where I heard of it because I had, like, those little... What were they called? Were they password guides? Cheat guides? Way back in the day on the SNES? And I had a lot of, like, hints and stuff for that game, even though I never owned it. I remember it had one of those things, too, where... I also don't remember what this is called, but, like, you, if you unfocus your eyes on an image... Allegedly, the dots on this, like, generic image will form some kind of, like, 3D effect if you relax your look at the, the, the whole thing. I've never got it to work, so... It's one of those things. It's very 90s. Um, who is Acro's younger brother? Sean Dingling. Everyone just calls him Bat. He fell in love with Regina. Oh gosh, is everybody in love with Regina? At least he's probably more appropriate in age, I hope. Trying to win her love was, her, was his downfall. 
Everyone seems to fall in love with Regina. Yeah, it's a big problem with the writers. Six months ago, while we're practicing. All of a sudden, Bat blurts out, Let me perform with Leon. Second job. Well, oh, you know what they were called? They were called Magic Eyes. I don't know if they had another term. I'm pretty sure it was called Magic Eye. I was thinking about it, and I'm like, it, it came to me. That was gonna bother me. Why do you do that? I don't know, but that's what caused the accident. I'll never forget that moment. It was so strange. Leon had the weirdest look on his face. He was smiling. He? You mean Leon? Yeah, Leon. He bit down, he was smiling. Some sick grin. No way. That's impossible. Smirking lion. A flying murder. Why does it seem that it's always Mo who catches all these incredible events? <laughs> you heard it. Arrest the clown, Chad. <laughs> no, no more evidence needed. Put him in jail. E either arrest him for the crime of murder or the crime against humanity. That is his comedy routine. You can pick one, chat. Nick? Can lion smile? Um... We never told the police about the incident. The circus would have been shut down if we had. The next day, the ringmaster took Leon out and shot him with the rifle. So that's what really happened. Well, you guys were so serious. What was I supposed to do? I had to tell you. All this truthfulness has put me in a mood for a burger. Here, you two have to have some pepper. Shaka, 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 shaka. There he goes again, acting like his normal crazy self. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh, is she gonna sneeze? Achoo! Achoo! Solve the problem with guns, Fairy America. True. Nice. What a wonderful sneeze. Huh? He thinks so. He sneezed with pepper and slipped out a banana peel. That's basic clownsmanship. Girly, I know you gaudy understand that. Why does he keep saying gaudy? I <laughs> Am I missing something? Nick, I think I'd make a good clown. Other than Regina, I've never seen a cuter sneeze. Ugh, stop talking about Regina, please. I <laughs> beg of you. See, like, the problem with it is, is I, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a pun, but I just keep thinking of, like, John Gotti, like, the actual criminal mafioso. So like I can't I like my brain doesn't want to disassociate that word <laughs> with the gangster. I'm just like, why do they keep referencing the gangster? I don't understand. Thank you. I think it was also the same person with the nickname, what was it, the Teflon Don or something? Jack can correct me if I'm getting my history wrong. But I, I keep hearing that and I'm like, I, I'm I'm pretty sure they're not referencing that, but I can't unsee it. <laughs> does Regina sneeze with Pepper too? She does. Bat would always tease her with Pepper. Bad. From my point of view, those two always looked so perfect together. Oh. Oh, now I understand. Okay. I figured out something and or I recalled something about the case. Now I understand. Got it. Okay. I'll keep that in mind for the potential last question of the case. They look perfect together, huh? Um, hmm. I guess we have enough information now to go back to... Acro's room? 
I think? We needed three locks, right? So we know about the lion. That, acro... I'm hoping that's good enough? Let's hope that's good enough. I don't want to talk to any of you. Go away from me. Ah, oh, Mr. Wright. Back again, I see. Well, he did say I'll be back. Wait, or was that someone else? Oh man, a Terminator reference? Okay. We're back because Akra's hiding why his legs were injured. He was hurt in the accident six months ago. It seems he knows that we know. Well, well. Seems you got things you want to talk about, so fire away. Well, Nagatama time. Take that! The birds wanted none of this chat. So I'm hoping between the note and the fact that we have Bat now and that dialogue means we have enough about the wheelchair. I have to ask you, how were you injured? I'm sorry. I thought we talked about this. An accident that happened during practice. An accident during practice? Yes. Unfortunately, acrobats are prone to all sorts of injuries. He's lying. If that were the real cause, he'd have no reason to keep it secret. Acro, are you really telling me that the practice accident was the cause of your injury? The question was worded a bit weirdly, but I'm assuming we just showed the lion here. Take that. Leon. Six months ago, you were attacked by the lion. That's when you were injured. One lockdown. I know I'm on the right track. I just need to keep going. You're saying that I was attacked. By a lion. That's what I'm saying. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright, but I'm an acrobat. I'm no animal tamer. The lion was coming at me. I'd be running for the exit. Okay, maybe attacked is not the best word to be using. So let me rephrase that as battled the lion. You seem to enjoy telling jokes. Why would I decide to battle a lion? Because you had to fight it. You had to fight it to save someone. Okay, let's present the brother. Take that! Take that. that. It was a shame what happened to your brother six months ago. You tried to save him, didn't you? And that's how you got that terrible injury. One more lockdown. Mo. He must have told you. Yes. Learned about that from Mo. But he didn't mention anything about you in regards to the accident. I suppose it was just the slip of the tongue on his part. That's how I figured it out. A slip of the tongue. Yeah, yeah, we know about the cut down together in the prime. Cut down together. That's where he slipped, and that's how I figured it out. You two ended up at the center of the same accident, together. Like always. I see. But an accident is an accident. It wasn't anyone's fault. Still haven't broken Acro's last psych lock. This must be one incredibly deep-seated secret. It wasn't, it wasn't anyone's fault. Do you care to explain more? Acro, I know you're still hiding something from me. Maybe someone you don't seem to like much is the reason you're being evasive. Well, the only person he seemed to have a reaction to, according to the dialogue earlier, was Regina. So I'm assuming we just present Regina here. Wow, we get four notches off if we guess incorrectly out of ten. That's brutal. Take that! Take that. Regina. You always seem to calm and collect it until you start talking about her. Saying things like she is cruel. Well done, Mr. Attorney. Got quite the set of eagle eyes. You know, her tiger tried to attack me. Regent tried to attack you. Twice. <laughs> he wasn't serious, I'm sure. Not trying to insinuate that I believe she spurred Leon to attack Bat, are you? Leon was never taught a command to attack people. Regina is incapable of doing anything like that. Besides, Regina had no reason to want to hurt my little brother. Regina and Bat were such good friends back then. But you still hate Regina. I've got proof of it. 
What? What are you talking about? Doh! Maybe I overdid it again. Okay, Homer. But if I can hand something over to Acro, maybe it'll... Here's proof that you had it out for Regina all along. Uh, I guess I present the murder note, because it was in her pocket. To the murderer, chat. Present it. Take that! Wow, that time it's worth five. <laughs> wow, it's actually pretty easy to game over. Potentially, uh, two mistakes and it's almost GG. This... Where did you get it? Regina posted on the bulletin board in the cafeteria. Before that, it was in her pocket. Hmm. Yeah, she mentioned breakfast time when she went to go feed the other person, meaning that he was the most likely person to give it to her, potentially. You wrote this, and then you put it in her pocket. That's right, isn't it? Acro dot dot dots. That's right. Well done, Mr. Mike. Unlock successful. Let's now ask about the wheelchair. My legs were injured by Leon. Six months ago, my younger brother Bat had a dare with Regina. A dare? An absurd dare. If I can put my head inside of Leon's mouth like you do. You have to go to the movies with me on a date. That's insane. Didn't he know how dangerous that is? We all thought he was being stupid too. That line was very old to begin with. Nage brought it with countless experience in doing that very trick. Unfortunately, this particular time, I guess Leon wasn't ready or willing. And that's when the accident happened? He just wanted to take her out to the movies. Poor Bat. When Leon chomped down, I jumped towards him. And Leon attacked me. That's how I ended up. What about Bat? He's still in a coma. Went to the hospital yesterday to visit him. I see. I'm still waiting for him to open his eyes again. That's the reason why I keep going. Regina and Bat. Bat and Regina. They were such a great they were such great friends. Oh yeah, I wanted you to take a look at this. What is it? This is the scarf my brother was wearing when Leon attacked him. Gross! It's covered in blood. This scarf. It was a present from Regina to my brother on the day of the accident. Hmm. When he did it, he looked like he was smiling. He? Leon, obviously. Oh! When he bit down on Bat's head, Especially on Leon's face looked like a grin. Nick? I know. What's that the same thing? What do you think it all means? <laughs> well, if I say it, I'll just be spoiling. I'll be taking that scarf if you don't mind. It's a good guess it was Von Karma. Miss Von Karma? I've already heard everything. So hand over the scarf. But the scarf is evidence in the trial. That is for me to decide. I think we should begin our preparations now, Acro. Preparations? I served a summons to Acro to appear in court tomorrow as a witness. Acro, we'll talk more at the prosecutor's office. Acro, a witness? Come, Acro, let's go to the office. Yes, ma'am. Now what do we do, Nick? How are we going to handle tomorrow? Don't worry about it. I'll figure something out. Translation. We're going to summon Mia again for no reason for like the 18th million time. Let her rest in peace, Phoenix. Let her rest in peace. Look at you all full of confidence. 
Must have found something you can use. This is all beginning to come together now. Oh, we're actually done with the investigation. To be continued. Oh, I think we can actually beat it tonight then. So I don't think there's that much left. I think it's literally just the trial. I don't remember there being like another plot twist like the other ones. Could be wrong. December 30th, 9.41 a.m. District Court, Venon Lobby, number five. Good morning, Max. Oh, yeah. Good morning, sweeties. You don't seem like your usual sparkling self today. I'm always like this before I go in front of an audience. I'm working up to it. Teehee. Don't get nervous, Maxie. Here. Have a glass of milk. Um, objection. That is clearly a carton of milk, and you're a filthy liar. <laughs> right, chat? BS. BS. That is not a glass. Nice try, though. Regina. <clears throat> How fabulous, my sweetie pie. My sweetie pie princess. You came to watch my performance today. Of course I did. Look told me I should come and watch this. Mo said that. So, what kind of performance will you put on today? Let me guess, you'll fly at the end? Uh, it's not that kind of show. Isn't that right, my sweeties? Huh? I think my sweetie pie princess doesn't... Yeah, she doesn't seem to realize what's going on. Or even where she is. You know, this is getting more messed up the longer it goes with the case. So you're telling me she does she has a very childlike view on death. She doesn't understand the legal system. She doesn't understand somebody's been convicted of murder. And yet they're constantly trying to date her. Okay. Okay, writers, I, I see what you're doing. It's you're you're building a case against yourself with every line of dialogue. Hmm. Well, Max, looks like it's time to raise the curtain. I'll see you later. Today, I'm just a member of the audience. Fabulous. Enjoy yourself out there. Good luck, Max. You're the best. Oh, don't give me that face. Oh, that face is awful. Yeah, like, look at how... Okay, so here's a perfect example in this style. Look at, like, where the edge of Maya's eyes are here, and then look roughly where the center of her ears are. That's why her face looks correct. <laughs> it's because the it's because you draw the line, you know, when you make the face, you, you make the T on the, on, the, on the egg, and that tells you where your ears will be and your eyes will be. And when you start making it dip really low, it looks really weird. I know you could do that to potentially like age up or age down characters, but when it goes really wrong, we have that droopy eye effect the other character has, which is very weird to look at. And it's also odd because not all of her images, I think, have that same ratio. So it just seems very inconsistent, visually speaking. Anyway, enough of the uh, visual aside. Regina's different, don't you think, Nick? I, I think she's actually mentally damaged. Not not jokingly, like something is wrong with this character. Just like there's something wrong with the Triloquist character. Top of the morning to you. Everybody, let's get stuck in legal limbo. How low can you go? Mo. Top of the morning to you, Governor. I mean that I guess that's kind of offensive. I don't really know why he's talking like this. Uh Top of the Morning. I why why is he going like semi-British? What's what's the angle of this alleged joke? That's the ticket. Tech of the day starts with energy in the morning. The early bird gets the worm. But then again, worms lack higher brain function. Aha! 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 Here, Max, I brought you a present. Have some milk. Oh my, uh, th thanks. How are you today, right? Well, I got the feeling that today I'm going to face off against the real culprit. <laughs> you mean Acro? Huh? You think he did it? Be careful. He's used to putting his life on the line, literally. He's got guts to spare. Why does Mo seem to know more about this case than we do? 
so much like he's not even looking at all the evidence he just knows chat all i got to worry about is how thin the tightrope is i'm already used to it this means i won't be able to press him like i can the other witnesses <laughs> this is the game's way of saying only press if you have to what are you going to do then nick guess today we'll just have to do without our usual psychological warfare Today, rely on evidence. It's the only way we'll get past Acro into the truth. I love that they say this, and I am 1000% sure in order to be even the first statement of this character, we have to press. <laughs> We're just immediately going to ignore the, the game's advice. I, I almost guarantee a chat. <laughs> if not in the first testimony, within two testimonies. You're right. But it's gonna be tough. Anyways, let me make sure that Regina sees it all today. It's important. Then she'll finally have to deal with the reality of what happened to her father. You want us to make sure Regina watches? Yes. That's why I brought her to court today. What's that supposed to mean? She needs to know what that when people die, they don't just become stars. Maybe an old-fashioned clown, but I don't believe in people becoming stars. December 30th, 10 a.m., just a court, courtroom number two. Bang. Court is now in session for the trial of Maximilian Galactica. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well, Miss Von Karma, you may proceed with your case. The prosecution would like to revise its previous theory of events. What's the meaning of this? We have discovered a new witness. Or shall I say, a new eyewitness. One that saw Maximilian Galactica fly off from the scene of the crime. Bang. Order, order! I had a feeling something like this would come up. Due to this revision, we are now prepared to explain how the defendant flew that night. An explanation the prosecution will present, if the need so arises. In fact, my detective stayed up all night creating a mock-up of the scene, on my orders. Poor Gumshoe. Very well. Please call your witness to the stand. Time to get to work, or shall I say, time to walk the courtroom tightrope. Name and occupation. Kendingling, but everyone calls me Acro. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wrong voice. I'm employed as an acrobat at the Berry Big Circus. Where were you the night of the crime? I was in my room that night. If you look at the map... Oh, excuse me. If you look at the map, you will see the witness's room is near the crime scene. My room is on the third floor. The crime scene is below my window. Hmm. The night of the crime, the witness saw something quite shocking. Would you tell us what you witnessed? Okay. Here it goes, chat. Witness testimony, what I witnessed. It was just after 10 p.m. I was resting in my bed. Around that time, I heard a large thump noise from outside the window. Then, a few moments later, I saw someone flying right by my window. It was Max Galactica. I only saw him from behind, but that's who it looked like. Well, that's not a very strong testimony there, chat. To be honest, when I saw that, I thought I was dreaming. Hmm, the witness's testimony matches up exactly with that of the clown. If that's the case, there is very little the prosecution need add. All that's left is to explain how the defendant disappeared into the sky that night. Hold it! Before we get that far, I'd like to cross-examine the witness. A foolish choice by a foolish fool who wishes to feel the foolish sadness of a sad fool. 
A man must know the proper timing for things, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Just like your old friend, Mr. Miles Edgeworth did. We dot 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 on that. Mr. Wright, do you have a problem with the witness's testimony? In the words of Miss Von Karma, they quote yesterday's proceedings. There's no way that actually happened. Very well. You may proceed with your cross-examination. Lethal drinking game. Take a shot every time Von Karma says fool. Oh no. You could even just be water. You would still die. <laughs> you would still die. Well, we have to disprove that he saw him. Which makes me kind of curious from like a... It, see, this is where I got confused. So the game was pushing evidence, evidence, evidence. I guess the closest is we need to establish that the bust that is missing and hasn't been found is what the witness actually saw. But we still can't directly use it or we'll get penalized. So... We have to press him on this to find out if he's missing a detail. Which is exactly what the game told us not to do. Hold it, I guess. Right, chat, roll your eyes. I'm <laughs> just immediately gonna ignore what the game told me. The light in your room was turned off then, right? That's true. I was going to bed after all. So, with the lights off, you were still able to clearly see a human fly by your window. The safety lights lit things up enough for me to see. But honestly, there's only enough light for me to see the silhouette outside my window. It was the person's back, so I couldn't see the white roses on the front. Did you see any of the other symbols? I clearly saw the silk hat, as well as the cloak wrapped around his body. I'm convinced that the person I saw was Max Galactica. Hmm. The more I press him, the less results I seem to get. Maybe there was something fishy with the latest testimony. You know what? When I first played this game, I was like, I don't think this is a really strong case for what we're about to argue, but that's fine. We'll say there's a contradiction. There is a huge contradiction with the testimony that was just given. Objection! Objection. If there is a contradiction, then prove it with evidence. Hmm. She's right. Let's see some evidence. Do you have any evidence to support your claim? See, like, this is where, like, okay, okay, let, let's, let's, Let's ignore whether or not we know how this, the crime was taking place. Like, wouldn't you think if the person was flying around and someone said they saw the silk hat on the figure, wouldn't that still be valid? Because, like, the hat would still potentially have fallen off, right? Like, while it was flying around, so it could have been possible to see it with the hat. This is where, when I first played, I was, like, really unsure, because I'm like, I think this is what they want me to present, but this just feels like it would have so many holes if you were to press this in like a logical scenario, especially if it was moving fast because we knew it fell off. So anyway, we'll present this, I guess. You claim to have seen the same exact thing as Mo you saw that night. Do you stand by that? What do you mean? The silk hat. What about the silk hat? I saw it on Max's head as he flew by my window. Well, you should have tried looking down out of your window that night. That would have been quite difficult, considering the state that I'm in. Just looking outside the window was tough enough challenge for me. That's a shame, because you would have noticed the silk hat found on the scene. That... that's the ringmaster's hat, right? Afraid not. No matter how you look at it, this is Max's silk hat. Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? Are you saying that Max has two silk hats? No, this is a handmade one-of-a-kind model, made only for Maximilian Galactica. Which means, Acro, that you've been fibbing on the stand. Bang. Order, order! Objection. As always, it looks like someone just had to open their mouth before thinking. Are you okay, Nick? Well, open my big mouth, and now I have to back it up. How about it, Mr. Wright? What would cause this witness to commit perjury in this court today? 
He has a grudge against Max. Acro was dreaming. Acro is the real culprit. Well, I mean, I guess we're just going all in with the he's the real culprit chat. Your Honor, on this occasion, the defense accuses Acro himself. On this occasion... A accuses Acro? What in the world are you accusing him of? Obviously, we accuse him of the murder of Mr. Russell Berry. Bang, bang, bang. Mr. Wright, are you serious? Deadly serious, Your Honor. Haha, <laughs> I think your trips to the circus have served you well. You seem to have learned how to try and grab at an audience's hearts and minds. Dot, 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 dot. Double exclamation mark. Your Honor, don't allow yourself to be swayed by his theatrics. Trying to wow the crowd with smoke and mirrors is the oldest bluff in the book. W really? If you don't believe me, just look at the witness. <laughs> There's another bird that came in. He's calm enough for it to be almost scary. Ooh, what is the name of that bird? I'll try to think about it. Maybe it'll come to me. I know some bird names. We're getting back, Dad. Hmm. Saying rather calm and collected. Unless it's supposed to be another plus-sized hummingbird. Not sure. Again, I don't think everything is to proportion. Mr. Dingling, do you have any response to the defense's accusations? I don't really need to say a thing, do I? See, they're trying to murder Phoenix. The birds are guilty, exactly. What do you mean? Everyone, take a good look at me. I can't even stand up by myself, let alone leave the lodging house. Uh, that's true. I understand that Mr. Wright is just trying to help his client. But to do this by accusing me of murder of all things. See, even a sliver of common sense makes it clear the accusation is ludicrous. She's right, way to pick on the disabled, you heartless, cruel man. Phoenix is a poopy head. <laughs> wow. What? Do we have a small child here? What? See that, Mr. Phoenix Wright. If you're trying to drum up support from the peanut gallery, that's how you do it. Uh... I think that's enough of this little game. I've got a doctor's note to confirm Acro is unable to stand under his own power. Maybe the defense is planning on making a claim to counter this as well. I can hear the defense now. Acro had an accomplice. What do you say about this, Mr. Wright? Did Acro have an accomplice? Hmm. Interesting question. But we're gonna go with, of course he didn't. Now then, this must be when we get to hear the name of the mystery accomplice. Not this time, Von Karma. What? You're not going to sucker me into this one. What are you blabbering about, Mr. Wright? There was no accomplice. Acro planned and committed this murder all by himself. Bang, bang, bang. O order, order. What the, what are you getting at? Way to keep them on their toes, Nick. Now I'm going to have to prove how it all fits together. I have to show how Acro murdered Russell Berry. Can you do it, Nick? Can you really do that? I know what I can't do. I can't stop now. If I stop attacking, I'm doomed. All right, then let's do it. Mr. Phoenix Wright. If this witness is the killer, then his eyewitness account is all lies, right? Hmm. Mr. Wright, I'd like you to clear something up for me. When the crime was committed, exactly where was Mr. Dingling? 
I mean, in his room. He was obviously here the entire time. That's Acro's room. Pretty simple, huh? Acro wasn't able to leave the lodging house by himself. In that case, there could be only one correct answer. Acro didn't leave his room to kill the ringmaster. What? Are you nuts? What say you, Mr. Dingling? It's an interesting theory. We dot dot dot. Um, that's it? Considering what you propose is impossible, yes, that's it. Hmm, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. As the witness has stated, your assertion is impossible. As he is in a wheelchair, there's no way he could go to the scene or be the killer. Hmm, you've got a point. It seems you've forgotten once again, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The defendant was clearly spotted at the scene of the crime. That's true. Mo said that he saw Max, didn't he? But Maya, it's still impossible for humans to fly. Do you mind if I ask a question, Mr. Wright? What is it? I understand some of your logic. However, do you think that I killed him? If I can't leave my room, I obviously couldn't wear Max's costume. Hmm, how did he do it? That's the next course of this legal buffet. Be careful, Nick. If you mess up here, she's right. I can't mess up here. Gotta give this one serious thought. I'm sure that Acro killed the Ringmaster. And he did it while he was in his room. No doubt about it. Time to enlighten us as to how Mr. Dingling committed the crime, Mr. Wright. Um... I'm thinking about this. I think I have a piece of evidence I can present here. I think. We're, we're gonna go present evidence. I'm going to present some evidence. So what did Mr. Dingling use to commit the crime of murder against Russell Berry? I think I can show the bust. What's that? A picture? It is indeed. The problem is with the item that's shown in the picture. The bust. It's quite a large bust. Because it is life-size, it is also very, very heavy. Heavy? Heavy enough to guarantee a certain death. Especially if it was dropped from a third-story window. Ah! Acro dot dot dots us. See? This is how Acro was able to kill the Ringmaster. With the force of gravity and Maximilian Galactica's ample bust. Bang, 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 chat. Order, order! So, you're saying the bust fell on to the Ringmaster? A rather simple crime. Even if you're stuck in a wheelchair, it'd be incredibly easy to commit. We got objectioned. How could you possibly wheel 
a wheelchair with something so heavy. It's impossible. Objection. Well, Acro is an acrobat. She had more than enough upper body strength to carry something like the bust. Bang, chat. Mr. Dingling, how do you respond to these charges? The birds fly away. Well, Acro's at a loss for words. He should be. He knows that I'm getting close to the truth. Acro is an acrobat followed by that face. Yep. Pretty much. Well, 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 Acro. You can't run away from the- Ow! I'd watch what I say if I were you, Mr. Phoenix Wright. <laughs> don't, don't, don't tell him he's running away from things when he's in the wheelchair. It's kind of messed up. Well, what? Your Honor, the physical health of the witness is material to this case. I demand that we get proper testimony from the witness himself. Hmm. Testimony, you say? On karma. She's just using this testimony as a ruse to solve for time. Objection. Objection! There's absolutely no need for such testimony. Objection. Objection! The defense has its version of the murder. The prosecution has the right to respond. Bang. The defense's objection is overruled. Why can't he see things my way once in a while? Mr. Dingling, I'm sorry, but we need you to testify about your physical condition. If you have any doubts about your ability to testify, we can request expert testimony. The witness will have no problems. However, let's all be respectful towards him. Thank you. Ah, uh, some woman will sink to any low to win a case. Witness testimony, Acro's physical state. I suppose I could have lifted something the size of that bust. I have a strong upper body from working as an acrobat, and only my legs were injured. However, lifting the bust and looking out of the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. That makes it impossible for me to have known the location of the ringmaster's head. Thus, it would be unrealistic for me to drop the bust on him. Don't you think? Hmm. I have no doubts in regards to this witness's testimony. It was impossible for him to lift the bust and stick himself out far enough to look. Not to mention that he could not have known the location of the ringmaster's head. A single false step would have led to even more severe injuries. That's what I was thinking. What is your opinion on the matter, Mr. Wright? We dot dot dot. I'd still like to proceed with my cross-examination. He's simply stalling. It's shameful, really. Ugh. I can't let her get to me. I've got to focus. Well, this time we're actually going to take her up on her word. So she said that he can't... Possibly both lift it and look to see where he was. So let's flip it on its own premise, as the game likes to do. And we have to look at it from a different angle. So what we have to think about is while he's able to lift it, what if he was able to determine where the person's head was at the time? So the that makes it impossible to know the location of the ringmaster said is not true. Because if we remember from the evidence presented earlier that has not come up so far in the case. In our evidence, we have the wooden box that he was hunched over. So presumably, if the wooden box was placed there by the killer, he would have had to have opened said box. And when leaning into said box, that's when he could strike. We're going to use this as evidence. Let's present it. Objection! Objection! Acro, you didn't really need to lean out the window, did you? What are you driving at, Mr. Wright? You already knew ahead of time where the ringmaster's head was going to be. Quite precisely, I may add. Objection! Objection! You si your silly hinting at things is pointless, Mr. Phoenix Wright. 
Enough stalling. How about you show us some evidence? Oh, she double banged on that one. But, but I did such a good job of hinting. Yes, yes, yes. Hurry up and explain things, Mr. Wright. Maybe you should take a look at this. The key point here is the wooden box. The same wooden box the victim was found hunched over. The same. The question is, who placed the wooden box here? Who? When Ben and company saw the ringmaster, they didn't see him holding the box. Which means that this wooden box was already placed at the scene of the crime. I have to admit that your theory makes a lot of sense. The moment the bus came falling down was exactly the same moment the ringmaster lifted up this wooden box. Which means the answer to all these questions is now crystal clear. You... You mean... If the bus were to fall upon the point marked out by the wooden box, there would be no way who could miss the head of the victim. No! Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order! This is unbelievable! Finally, some of these loose ends are starting to tie themselves up. Now I just gotta keep going. And there's only one way to go from here. Forward. Bang. So the next question I have is, who placed that wooden box at the scene? It was Mr. Dingling, of course. He connected it to a rope, and all he had to do was lower it down. Wow! Allow me to whip some sense into you, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Ow, ow, ow! The ringmaster's head could have been anywhere when he lifted the box. That's why the box was so specially made. Specially made? Indeed. It had the most peculiar feature. Well, I mean, the contents were peculiar, but I don't think that's what the game is hinting at. I think it has to do with the weight of the box. So if we look at the description of the box itself, I believe it was noted as being over 20 pounds. So it had a small but strong lock and basically nothing in it, but I think they want the weight of the box here, so we're gonna go with that. The box had a remarkable weight. Weight. According to the court record, it weighs 20 pounds. Just to lift up this wooden box would have required... Oh, I see. One would have to squat down, then lift it up with their body, wouldn't you say? That's exactly what I was trying to point out. The box is also very large. The box was also carrying handles on either side, doesn't it? That is correct. Lift up the box, you'd have to squat down. Which means, that no matter who you are, your head would be in approximately the same place. Fool! Oh, the birds are back. Does he even bother to listen to me anymore? I've heard what you had to say. Dot 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 exclamation mark chat. I must admit, I'm shocked at your imaginative skills. I you... Did you do it? Did you place this wooden box in the plaza? Mr. Wright may have a vivid imagination, but I could never have done what he's proposing. What? Mr. Wright, do you recall the original location of Max's bust? Um... I think... It was in the cafeteria originally, I believe. So I'm going to say I remember. Of course I remember. It was the top of the table in the cafeteria. There we go. We figured it out. Hmm. Then what happened to it? I'd like you to remember one important fact, Mr. Wright. I could not possibly leave the lodging house by myself. Ah, oh, that means... You understand what I mean, don't you? 
I may very well have been able to drop the bus from my room. However, how would I have gotten the bus from the cafeteria to my room? You see, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Explain that. Don't forget, you said there was no accomplice. Uh. Tell us exactly how the witness would have carried the bus from the cafeteria. Yep, we definitely have a problem here. second. But this is no place to get perplexed. I've got to get my wits about me and prove how things happen once and for all. All right, Mr. Wright, let's hear your explanation. How did the witness get the bus from the cafeteria back to his room? I think I just present the monkey. The monkey's been gathering everything. I'm gonna say take that. A monkey? Everyone knows money. He loves shiny objects of any size. Oh! Like when he stole the ventriloquist's ring. So, are you saying the witness had a monkey steal the bust? Of course he didn't order the monkey to steal it. The monkey stole it on his own, then brought it back home. Dot 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 dot, X, double exclamation mark. Hmm... Home? Money lives in Acro's room. Acro's room? Objection! But the bus was bronze, wasn't it? Bronze isn't all that shiny. Objection! Maybe you should put the whip down sometime and read the court record. Monkey the murderer? Yeah, pretty much. My, those are some very nice cards he's holding. Yes, they're made of platinum, which is very shiny. Like how proud he is. It's like such a stupid sentence. I love it, chat. We get so excited. Hmm. Ah. Acro? Money is a strong monkey, right? It'd be easy for him to bring the bus back to your room. Hmm. Dot dot dot, chat. If he wasn't able to handle him that himself, I'd be on the market for a new roommate. Uh-oh, admission. Order, order. I said order, Miss Von Karma. Where is the bust in question at this moment? Um, 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 I, um, I don't know. We're searching for it as we speak. Hmm. This is a rather strange turn of events. Well, let's say the monkey had not stolen the bust. What would have happened then? Well, in that event, something else would have been used as the murder weapon. Hmm, wait. Then you mean this bust was murder was the murder weapon, purely by accident? It's possible. Maybe Acro saw Money's mountain of stolen goods and thought to use one of them. Dot 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 from Acro. Anyways. I think we're more than proven of one critical fact. Namely, that it was entirely possible that Acro was the murderer.
Moron. <laughs> like her just bang, bang, bang as we get called a moron. Mr. Wright's argument was so circular, I'm still a bit dizzy. However, his argument does hold water. There's no denying that. Don't seem so flamboozled. Flamboozled, not bamboozled. Especially by this fraud of an attorney. Fraud? You've forgotten the absolute most important thing, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Oh no, is it evidence law? And what is that? You should know. And we got whipped again. You forgot that your fraud of a magical client was spotted at the scene of the crime. N not really. I mean, you just proved that it had his outfit. Ah! There's no reason to doubt the clown's testimony. Th that's true. How do you respond to that, Mr. Wright? Nick, don't let her beat you now. I won't. This is my chance to turn this trial around. You can almost call it a turnabout, chat. When the murder occurred, there were two people at the scene of the crime. One was the vic- oh, wrong person. One was the victim, Russell Berry, and the other was the murderer himself. Answer this and only this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Who was the murderer the clown saw? I'm, I mean, it's, it's the bust, right? Well, I'm just going to present the bust. Well, actually, hold on. Well, mm, hold on. <laughs> Wait, I have to think about the order of the murders. Yeah, I guess I guess the bust would make sense here. I, I might be. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not jumping ahead. I think I have to establish as the bust wearing the hat. I th think this is right. Let's say take that. He saw Max's book. Ow! I asked who was the other person most saw on the scene. Yeah, but it has nothing to do with the question. Au contraire, mon frère. It does indeed have something to do with the question. Mo said that he saw Max's silhouette. But he did not actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. I just wanted to make sure I was not answering out of order there. Bang, 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 chat. Huh? How is that possible? It's simple, really. What Mo actually saw that night was Max's bust. Objection. What are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain at all in this case? I mean, have you seen what happens when we try to think? Smoke might as well as be coming out of our ears, Von Karma. The silhouette he saw was wearing a cloak. Objection. There's no reason why you couldn't attach a cloak to the bust. It'd be easy to hang one off the cards in the bust stands. Idiot, who in the right mind would put a cloak on a bust? It doesn't matter who put it on the bus. Just wait a minute now, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bus? The question is of utmost importance to this case, don't you agree? Yo, he caught me. Why are we doing Homer sounds? So let's have it, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bus? Uh, that's actually a good question. Let me think about this. Let's take a look at our profiles. So, we can rule out most of the people here. The question more is, in the timeline of events, did I think it was Aquil, or did I think it was the person himself, the victim? Um... I mean, I could see why people would potentially answer it was Acro to disguise it. But maybe he just wanted to make sure it was seen, so he added the cloak to it. I guess we'll see what the game's reasoning is for this. I'm actually going for Russell Berry here. Fool! Him! You are saying it was the victim himself? 
Russell Berry. Because, I mean, it doesn't make sense to attach it when you drop it initially. That, that's what I'm leaning on. But I would understand if people put the other option for sure. That's what I'm saying. He, I mean the victim himself, placed the cloak on the bust. Place the cloak isn't really the right way of putting it. Then what would be the right way of putting it, Mr. Wright? Explain yourself! Nick, do you really have a handle on all of this? I'm fine, Maya. I'm really putting all the pieces together. There's really only one picture I can paint anyways. All right. Do you want to know what really happened that night? Let's step back in time. Uh-oh, we're getting the overview chat. Acro used a, wood a rope to lower the wooden box onto the scene. Then he attached that rope to the bust. And dangled the bust out of his bedroom window, directly above the wooden box. At the same time, the ringmaster told Max to wait in his room and went to the scene. Of course, at the time, the ringmaster was wearing Max's costume. Perhaps he didn't want anyone to recognize him that night. But just as he feared, he was spotted at the entrance of the lodging house. By none other than the ventriloquist and his puppet, Ben and Trillo. When the ringmaster arrived at the scene, he bent over to lift the wooden box. And that's when Acro took his chance and released the rope. Now this is when the magic happens. At the very instant the bus hit the victim. Wow, I forgot that was a plot point. Wow, that is so contrived. <laughs> oh my gosh. I forgot that's what they were actually going for. I totally forgot about that scene. Oh my gosh. Come on. Chat, like, really? That's what they went for with it? <laughs> my brain didn't even go there. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie to you. It's definitely magic. Wow, that is super bad. You wait just a second there, Mr. Phoenix Wright. As much as you try, as much as you scheme, this just isn't true. It can't be. It's still a little early to be getting so upset, Miss Von Karma. The circus isn't over yet. You're telling me this court is still holding a trial for some reason. What? The impact of the bus on the victim threw the cloak up, which snagged onto the bust. The impact also caused the sound a certain witness heard, prompting him to take a look. That witness, of course, Lawrence Mo Curls, the clown. When Mo looked out his window, the cloak had already snagged onto the bust. Now, Having completed the crime, Acro naturally went about pulling up the murder weapon. Of course, he had no idea that Mo saw the bus being raised with the cloak dangling on it. Primarily because, in his wheelchair, he couldn't see out of his window. So he just kept pulling the bus up. And that is how the magical murder disappearing to the sky came to be. Everybody dot dot dots at that. So you see, the only person who could have pulled this off is the person who's able to drop the murder weapon from above the crime scene. Acro, it could have only been you. Acro's been playing mind games with all of us. He sure has, but he's come to the end of his rope now. Oh, they're they're on, they're on point with some of the uh, puns, I guess. Calvisham saying, "I love how they can say any theory and not have one evidence, and everyone just goes along." I mean, so I mean, they should be pressing us for evidence right now. We're gonna see immediately if we get pressed for evidence. So, 
What now? You've graced us with a rather long-winded tale. But do you have any evidence to prove your fairy tale is true? See, there you go, Calvisham. Phoenix is lucky the murderer always confesses at the end. So far, he has not confessed. Dot, 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 dots. Uh, evidence? In this court, only two things matter. The power of evidence and the power of my whip. Um... What is... <laughs> Bang. Don't forget the power of my gavel as well. Mr. Wright, the prosecution brings up a good point. Can we see some evidence? Nick, they say they want evidence. I just explained how there could only be one possible murder method. There's still something unusual about Mo's eyewitness testimony. Unusual? A contradiction, actually. Okay, then. Use that and get out of this jam. Bang. That's enough talking amongst yourself. Proceed, Mr. Wright. Present some evidence to the court that backs your claims. I want hard proof that you have unraveled the trick to the magic case. So... I believe the answer to this is going to be the silk hat. So we saw a couple times that the bust allegedly had a silk hat. Yet we also know that at the time of death of the character wearing the hat, the hat spilled onto the snow. So I guess we could try to bring up the hat to potentially go into a break in the court. And maybe then they'll come back with testimonies that we can use to finish off the trial. So let's bring up the silk hat since that's a contradiction in the image is shown. Take that! The problem is Max's three symbols. You know, the silk hat, the cloak, and the white roses. Those symbols were a problem numerous times during yesterday's proceedings. Yesterday, there were two contradictions in Moe's testimony. The silk hat was one. The white roses were the other. But the theory I just presented explains all these contradictions. You fool! Do you ever shut up? Max's silk hat was found at the scene of the crime. However, remember what Mo said yesterday. He testified the criminal he saw fleeing the scene was wearing a silk hat. There's only one explanation for that. The silk hat that Mo saw was actually the busts. Bang. Makes sense. If you look at it that way, then he did see the silk hat. Well, sort of. Objection. Fine, you've got one. What about the other contradiction? The other contradiction? Remember what that ventriloquist said in court. He said that he witnessed white roses on Max's chest that night. But the clown's testimony doesn't match. The clown said there were no white roses. I'd like to see you try and explain that one away. Can you do it, Nick? Of course. I can, ex I can explain all of it. What was that? Please, recall the instant when the cloak snagged onto the bust. If the cloak snagged onto the bust, what happened to the roses? <laughs> wow, it gets even more BS. Chat, I, chat, I don't even remember this at all. I, I'm now experiencing this for the first time, I promise you. I definitely blanked this part of the case out of my mind. <laughs> that is so stupid. I'm sorry, chat. I need a moment. Let me let me take a drink. Just wow, chat. Just wow. Do you get it yet? If the cloak got snagged onto the front of the bust, it means that the white roses would end up on the back of the bust. Ah! That goes. This forgot about this bit of the case too. Yeah. I kind of remember the murder method, which is unfortunate, but yeah, I definitely forgot about this. I was, I was not mentally ready for that. Which explains why Mo didn't see them. The white roses were not visible because they were on the backside of the bust. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order. This is quite the shocking state of affairs. Mr. Wright's theory still sounds a bit absurd to me. Oh, it, it sounds absurd to everybody, Judge. Don't worry. However, let's just keep going down this road for a while and see where it leads. Let's do this, Nick. Then maybe Von Karma will finally throw in the towel. 
She's waving the finger at us, chat. Well, so much for that theory. Mr. Wright, do you mind? What is it? You took the time to research our circus, didn't you? Well, yes, I did. Is there something making you think that I didn't? If you did, then maybe you'll understand why I think you're off track. Um, why is that? Motive. This witness feels an incredible debt of gratitude towards the ringmaster. If only that scarf that was taken away just before the trial was relevant, chat. If only there was some way we could bring it up again in the next discussion. Anyone with any relation to the circus is well aware of this. Dot 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 exclamation mark. Thus, there's absolutely no way someone like this would kill the ringmaster. Bang. Hmm. Your Honor, I'd like you to hear Akro's story. Learn about his relationship with the Ringmaster, and his life up until now. Oops, I think she's handing us the win on this one. Well, what do we do? There's no doubting that Akro deeply respected the Ringmaster. Akro's motive, hmm. Bang. It seems that this case isn't over yet. Very well. However, I feel this is a good place to take a break. No, 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 no. We're still going. We got some time. I will listen to the rest of Mr. Dingling's testimony after recess. This court will now take a 10-minute recess. Well, we managed to survive the first part of the trial to be continued. And hey, I didn't get an error. I wasn't sure about one of the responses, but I went with the gut feeling we got there. So anyway... 4-2 trial chat. December 30th, 2.17 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 5. I can't believe it, Acro! It's pretty shocking, isn't it? It definitely is, and to think he was always the most straightforward to the, of the group. Jeebus, am I that hated? Yes, yes you are. Ahem. Acro tried to pin the murder on you on purpose. He... he did. Psst, psst, cough. But... but I'm nothing but a little nobody, you know. But you're not, which is kind of the reason why. Cough. Hey, hey, pal. You gonna ignore me after I went to all this trouble to bring you some evidence? Oh, is he gonna bring us the scarf? Nice, if he is. Ah, uh, Detective Gumshoe. Aw, oh, forget it. I'm going home. This guy deserves to be guilty anyways. Wow! <laughs> wow, detective is like, screw the court system. <laughs> I I am the judge and jury of this case. Case closed. Max did it. Damn. Things you don't want to hear from police officers handling evidence, Chad. Now, now, detective, I'm sorry. Look, why don't you relax a little bit? We've got some really tasty milk. How about a car trick, detective? Oh, well, if you insist. Now, about that evidence you mentioned, what is it? Here you go. Okay, so we did get the scarf. Huh? This was yesterday in Acro's room. Yup, and I've included the forensic results. Take a look at it later. Won't Miss Von Karma be mad that you're doing this? He dot dot dots. That's why this is all a secret. Yeah, it's not really a big secret in how we gain this. Huh? Look, de details are on a need-to-know basis. Not really allies or anything. Uh, okay. I'm debating whether to make a comment. I'm not going to make a comment, but I'll read the description of the scarf, which is updated. Bat scarf. Same with his blood and a small quantity of pepper. Mmm. Recall that the small seasoning bottle was inside the wooden box containing pepper. 
Perhaps that is the final clue people that have not seen the case before needed to know to figure out the motive. But everything that's happened in court up until now has gone according to our plan. Oh no, it's all according to Keikaku, apparently. I don't know. This Funk Karma didn't seem in control of things in there just now. You'll figure it out eventually, pal. Yesterday, our final plans were set into motion. Yeah, if chat does know the name of the bird, please let me know. I did try looking it up briefly while taking a water break <laughs> between some of the sentences. I couldn't find the exact species. Oh, well, I'm assuming by the stripe on its cheek it is a woodpecker, though. Anyway, F Phoenix says, final plans. Uh-huh. That reminds me. I've got a message from the prosecutor for you. Nothing is ever truly decided until the very end. That's it. And that's it for me, too, pal. I'm out of here. What did he mean by that? The very end part. I'm not sure. It's all pretty cryptic to me. Oh. One more thing. Ah, uh, don't scare me like that. Looks like there's a large care package from the circus for the defendant. What? For me? It's milk. W why are they all bringing him milk? This is just getting increasingly weird. Reception area looks like some kind of dairy. Now hurry up and drink it all before it spoils. An entire dairy's worth of milk? For me? December 30th, 2.27 p.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Bang. Court is now back in session. Miss Von Karma, please continue from where you left off. I'd like to continue with Akro's testimony, starting with his relationship to the victim. I'd also like to get proof from the defense. Proof of what kind of motive Akro would have had to commit this crime. Understood. Now, Mr. Dingling. Yes, Your Honor. Please proceed with your testimony. Finally, we get to the motive. Wait, Nick, are you okay? Just do me a favor and don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. Oh, she gulps. Witness testimony about the ringmaster. We were... When we were little, we were abandoned by our parents. It's when the ringmaster of a very big circus, Russell Berry, took us in. I became an acrobat at around nine years old. I wanted to find a way to repay the ringmaster. That was my sole purpose in life. Hmm. You're such a thoughtful young man. As you heard, the witness deeply respected the victim. I wonder how anyone could think that Acro would kill the man he held in such esteem. You're absolutely right. How could anyone think that, Mr. Wright? Which is why there's no need for a cross-examination, is there? Actually, that's the question I'm trying to answer myself. Why would Acro kill the Ringmaster? Might be my last chance to answer that question. See, this is where one of those things where I feel like the game is trying to trick me here. So, like, none of these comments are able to be pressed. Like, if we think about it from, like, a, a motive standpoint. Like, ultimately, we know we have to tie it back to Leon and potentially the pepper, which is found on the scarf. And we can present the profiled images of them. But I don't think that testimony specifically is something that we can question. I'm going to go with the game is trying to trick me. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm going to go. Say, I'm going to say there's no need to question him. Normally, if it's something we do have to do, we have a different kind of pre-made response. And this is one of the only times where when we have a choice of yes or no, that it doesn't use the canned response. So I think from the meta standpoint where it didn't use the phrase it normally does, whether or not we want to press further, for example, that that means I shouldn't do it. So I'm going to go with this as my final answer. No need to question him. There's no need to cross-examine this witness. Well, what's that? Why was the ringmaster murdered? 
There's no need to delve into that bit of testimony when I know the answer already. Mr. Wright, I'd like to ask you a question. Go ahead, Your Honor. I would just like to know, can you provide an explanation as to why Acro would want the Ringmaster dead? See, and then this is another one where it's like, I, I as the player know what the answer would be. But at the same time, it's like that tricky part with the evidence law in the final case, where it's one of those ones where it's like, oh, I can't provide one, but I know somebody that can. And I feel like this is a second trap set up by the game. I'm going to choose not to fall for this, even though I know what the response to this should be. And I could realistically put up an argument with all the evidence we have. I don't like either of these questions, and I'm going to say I can't provide one. But I'm going to let you know, chat, this is the kind of thing that bothers me in the case, where, like, if I, as the player, have figured it out, it gets really annoying to be told, oh, you don't know how it's done, and I'm like, yes, I definitely do. I'm going to say I can't provide one to avoid getting a strike against us, because I think that's what the game wants. But, as I said before... Nick? Yeah, I didn't even have to think about it. It was obvious from the start. Your Honor, the reason that Acro killed the Ringmaster is something that can't be proven. What? That's because Acro had no reason to kill the Ringmaster at all. Wow! Your foolish attempts to fool us like foolish fools is so full-heartedly foolish. Yeah, your, your mouth would just be overflowing with shots at this point of water or something like that. So many fools, chat. Did you forget? You made an accusation against this witness, did you not? I believe it was. This is the real killer of Russell Berry, Ringmaster. If you want to jump to the end of things, then yes, that sounds about right. The end of things? If only we could follow evidence long in some kind of standard of the courtroom. I know, I know. Acro, you didn't plan to kill the Ringmaster at all, did you? The Ringmaster wasn't your target that night. What did you say? I'm saying that the target of this witness's murderous plot was not the Ringmaster. Because it was never his intention to kill Russell Berry to begin with. What? Bang, bang, bang. Order, order! Bailiff, I don't care who it is. Smack anyone who's loud in the face. Twice if you must. <laughs> there you go. Judge is authorizing the beatdown. For a lawyer, the vocabulary is very limited. He no think good, Calvisha. <laughs> he no school good. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what in the world are you trying to do in my court? Oh! Mr. Phoenix Wright. What in the world are you trying to do in his court? Are you attempting to imply that Acro was all? Oh, the bang bang of the fist was... Oh, I was going to time it with the bang bang of the fist. That's so sad. Are you attempting to imply that Acro was trying to kill someone else? Well, I mean, there's only one other person he hates, so we'll present this. Take that. Regina Berry. This young girl is the ringmaster's daughter, correct? Acro, you were really aiming for her that night, weren't you? Objection! Objection. You don't need to answer that. It's a mean-spirited, leaning question. <laughs> Phoenix is being a meanie poo-poo fan. I mean, like, seriously? Mean-spirited? Von Karma used that term. I mean, like, to be fair, there are things where it is... It, you can declare objection leading the witness. Like, you could do that. Or badgering the witness. Like, th those are valid objections, but... Objection! Dango says, I don't think a judge could even give that kind of order even if they wanted. Absolutely not. He could easily answer this question. Her whip is mean-spirited? Yeah, pretty much. If I'm wrong, all he has to say is, you're wrong. That's it. That's it, huh? Mr. Phoenix Wright? Bang. Enough, Mr. Fe- Oh, not Mr. Phoenix. Enough, Mr. Wright. Allow me to- uh Oh! The only thing allowed to interrupt me is death itself. Oh my gosh, maybe she is part of the Belmont clan. Huh? 
And that goes for you too, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Show me evidence, now! I want to know why Acro would want to kill Regina Barry. Okay, now we finally get to introduce the note into the evidence. Dot dot dot, double exclamation mark. Yes, me too. I demand to see proof. Present evidence that proves Acro was out to kill this young girl. It's one of those things where it's like a little weird. He didn't super follow up on this. I don't know. I don't know. Th 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 this part of the plot is just kind of weird to me. I kind of vaguely recall this. Anyway, let's let's say take that. Acro, you remember this, don't you? That's... It's a piece of paper that we found inside the Ringmaster's tailcoat. Inside the victim's tailcoat, Acro wrote this note. It's ironically entitled to the murderer. Its purpose was to call someone to the plaza at 10 o'clock. So you're saying that he called Russell Berry with that note? Yes, but there's just one little problem. Problem? Akro did indeed place his note into someone's pocket. However, that someone was not the ringmaster. You mean, it wasn't for the... That's exactly what I mean. The person this note was intended for was none other, none other than Regina Barry. Bang, bang, bang. Order, 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 Mr. Wright. This little theory of yours. It's the truth, Your Honor. It isn't a theory. Simply put, Regina didn't think the note was meant for her. Which is why, the morning of the crime, she placed it on the cafeteria bulletin board. That's when her father, I mean the ringmaster, saw the note. That's correct. The ringmaster ended up in the plaza instead of Regina. And he was be killed and excuse me, and he was killed because of that mistake. Instead of Regina. So, like, we could have guessed a little bit from context clues. I mean, obviously he hated Regina prior to this point, but if we took for granted most testimony earlier that he seemed genuinely upset that the circus master died, means that he definitely didn't intend for that to be the target, if we believed the thing to not be an act, of course. So there's like a little bit of a hint of this, if people were thinking back on the case. That's... that's... that's incredible. Remember the testimony that Acro gave us earlier today. Lifting the bust and looking out the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. If I were to do that, I'd end up falling out the window myself. Acro had no idea who it was that arrived in the plaza, because he couldn't look down out of his window to see who it actually was. I've got it! I've got it! Acro thought it was Regina down in the plaza, and that's when he let the bust fly. Hey, Nick? Isn't Regina listening to all this from the audience? She is. Unfortunately, it's only going to get harsher from here. Hope Regina can handle it. There we go, chat. Break her mind. Make her snap. Bang. Acro wrote this note to Regina. Objection. Foolishly foolish fool. With the foolishly foolish fool ideas. A foolish tomfoolery. You're so foolish you've even made me sound like a foolhardy fool. Very well, Mr. Phoenix Wright. If you're so sure, then tell us about this line. I have conclusive evidence of what took place. Well, obviously it's the pepper bottle we had earlier. It's the only thing we haven't presented. Yes, what about that line? Well, if the note was meant for Regina Berry, it would mean that. This note is declaring that Regina Berry is a murderer. <laughs> she seems pretty full of herself. Oh, oh, I see what you did there, Dango. That's a good one. I like that. You just don't get it, do you? What? What did you just say? The ringmaster knew what the note meant, which is why he went to the plaza in place of his lovely daughter. Bang, bang, bang. Hold it right there, Mr. Wright. What is this incident that is alluded to in the note? The incident six months ago. A 
<laughs> I could say I have no idea. Uh, let's not say that. We're gonna say I know all about it. An incident occurred six months ago, and now I am more than ready to show this court what happened at that time. Moron. Wait, are you sure that it relates to the present case? It does indeed, Your Honor. Everything in this case is its start, and what happened six months ago. Really, Nick? I, um, I think so. Well then, if that's the case, hurry up and tell us all about it. What is this conclusive evidence mentioned in the note? I know I'd certainly like to know what it is. I can't answer that question. The judge is, the judge is gonna think I'm bluffing. The conclusive evidence about the incident six months ago is actually the small seasoning bottle, which we can figure out because we had the scarf tell us directly that a small quantity of pepper was involved. So we can just directly assume that this is the correct answer. Take that, chat. Hmm. Hachu! 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 Oh, chu! What kind of spicy joke is this? Mr. Phoenix Wright. It isn't a joke at all. It's the decisive evidence you've asked for. What do you mean? Recall that the victim was trying to take the wooden box away with him. He was doing so because this piece of decisive evidence is what was inside. Another unbelievable conclusion. Very well, Mr. White. So what exactly are you saying? Are you claiming Regina Berry killed someone? with a small bottle of pepper. Taking the note into account, that's the only logical conclusion you could draw. Objection. Foolish fool who never tires of his own foolish ways. If you're so sure, Mr. Phoenix Wright, then answer this question, or apparently receive five strikes or four strikes against us. Who was Regina's very intended victim? So if you recall, Nah, uh, let's not say anything yet. We'll go a little further. But Pepper is... This is not the first time Pepper has been brought up. I'll say that for now. Oh, no, no, no. She asked for the victim. <laughs> I was about to put Regina. That would have been a, that would have been a silly mistake. Uh, we're going to present uh, Bat here. Take that, chat. Who is this? That is Akro's younger brother. Objection. What does this prove? His younger brother isn't dead. Technically, that's true. However, Bat has been in a coma for six months now. It's not a stretch to see how Acro could feel that his brother is dead. Regina, she did that to him. Do you spend your entire life dreaming up of new ways to be a fool? Naturally, the prosecution has looked into Acro's brother, Sean Dingling. Six months ago, he was bit by a line and fell into a current comatose state. A, a little lion. Regina, I mean, Miss Regina Berry, is an animal tamer by trade. However, no tamed animal in that position is ever trained to attack another human. They wouldn't understand the command. Moreover, Miss Regina could never do something like that. It's just not in her. Um, I'm gonna argue subjective, not factual. Bang. Hmm. So then what happened to Acro's brother? He's not the victim of an attempted murder. He's the victim of an accident. I see. Now what do we do? No one seems to be going along with your theory. Do you think what happened to Bat was actually an accident? Uh... I'm gonna answer it was more than that because we haven't used the scarf yet. It's I guess the best way to put it is that it's an accident, but caused by not the person they think it's caused by, I believe is the best way of phrasing that. So we're going to say it was more than that. The lion biting bat was no accident at all. What? 
You are such an amateur, Mr. Phoenix Wright. There is no way that Regina would ever incite her lion to attack another human being. She may not have incited the lion to attack another human being, but Regina was responsible for making the lion bite Acro's brother, Bat. So now we should be able to present the scarf. That's... That's just a scarf, Acro. This scarf is something that Bat used to wear, correct? That's right. And who is the one that gave this scarf to Bat? R Regina. Regina gave it to him. Regina! There is something more than just blood on the scarf, Your Honor. And what might that be? Pepper. Pepper? Pepper. Regina gave the scarf to Bat right before the accident. And she covered it with as much pepper as she could. I like how they're dot 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 dotting. So I guess I'll say it now before the game gets into it, just for clarity. So I didn't want to talk about it before this point. But if you think about it, uh, when the lion was quote unquote smiling, the, the lion wasn't really smiling, it was sneezing. And when you sneeze, you typically close your eyes. So that's, that's where we're going with this little particular conclusion. I felt like this is probably the best part to say it. Hey, what's with the silent treatment? I'm going to assume by him being pecked, it's just living up to the, to being a wood pecker or something like that or a super oversized hummingbird i'm not really sure the beak is very long that's why i'm kind of torn and again the bird is not drawn properly to scale i don't think um excuse me mr wright you've done a good job of fingering a criminal uh phrasing your honor but out of curiosity, what was her crime? Um... Miss Berry gave a pepper-covered scarf to Bat as a present. Where's the crime in that? It still seems like the judge doesn't get it. Mr. Phoenix Wright. It's a magic bird, it's true. Wasn't it said the lion seemed to be smiling? Smiling? The lion was smiling. Right before Bat was bit by the lion. For a moment, the lion's mouth ch changed and it looked like he was smiling. Lions smile? I've never heard of them smiling, however. Lion sneeze. Whoa, 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 whoa. Leon wasn't trying to bite bad at all. In reality, all he actually did was sneeze. He sneezed because of all the pepper on the scarf. Whoa, 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 what? You fool! Dot, 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 dot. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, judge. This is still not the most ridiculous case in the game. Objection. Lots of dot, dot, dots. What's the matter, Miss Von Karma? I, I, I object for objection's sake. Oof. That was a, that was a bad objection. Jeez. Mr. Phoenix Wright, you, this theory, you believe it? You really intend to say that this is how this joke of an accident actually happened? Of course I do. It's the truth. The lion sneezed due to the pepper, and that's when Bat lost consciousness. Akro nearly lost his brother due to this accident, or this joke, as you put it. Which is why he tried to get his revenge against Regina. You foolish idiot! Huh. Ha <laughs> ha It almost does seem like a terrible joke. Doesn't it? Uh-oh. As the music plays. Once again, 
I'm impressed by your imagination, Mr. Wright. Dot 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 exclamation mark. To think that there's someone who treats this accident with the respect it deserves. Are you telling me that what I said was true? He dot dot dots. A Acro? You don't mean. You can't mean. Witness? Are you confirming the defense's claim? Mr. Wright. Unfortunately, your imagination is not enough to find me guilty of murder. What do you mean by that? The pepper, the scarf, the line. The witch in the wardrobe, is that where we're going with this? I see where you're going, but it's a bit hard to swallow. Not to mention the fact that there's an even bigger problem with your theory. What would that problem be? The same problem it's always been. Evidence. If I drop Max Bus on the top of the ringmaster, where is the evidence that proves that claim? Uh, as we get pecked. Hmm. You mean the conclusive evidence? The biggest problem is the murder weapon. The lack thereof, to be more precise. The murder weapon? The bus that the defense claims was used. If that were to be found in Acro's room, and if it was covered with the victim's blood, that would be awfully conclusive in my eyes. Yes, it would. The bust. Nick, you gotta do something. This is the last step. But get this one right, the case is won. Hmm. So... This is another tricky one where we have to kind of think about it. So we ourselves went to Acro's room. At no point did we see the bust. So we have to think to ourselves, potentially as a first time player, is the game trying to trick us? And I think this was the first time, I think in the case where I smiled because I realized where the bust was when it presented this option. I didn't think about where it was. I had figured out most of the methods and then I went, oh wait, there is one place the bus can be can be hidden that potentially would not be found. And so to that I answer, see how things work out first. So we know if we go to request the room, it will not go well for us. So let's continue with this option. It might be worthwhile to search Acro's room, but... Why aren't you going to search his room? It looks like you finally figured things out, didn't you? Now you know the true meaning of Von Karma. Total justice. I guess. I figured with you. That's the least I should expect. You leave no stone unturned. I will say, I thought it, I thought it was kind of nice that this case was similar to the other Von Karma case. Uh, where the evidence was right in front of us and we just didn't realize it was there. I kind of like the tie-in from the different cases. Like if we line up you know, case number three from the first game to case number three in this game. I like that the evidence is like right there, but you might not realize it's there. I, I like that connection, and that's one of the few things I will praise about this case. That's about it, though. I figured with you, that's the least I should expect. Leave no stone unturned. As we get whipped. Avon Karma never loses anything to chance. We already search Acro's room yesterday. Well, what did you find? There's no reason to even say it. If we found what you think we found in that room, Acro would not be here as a witness. But to put a point on it, Max's bus was not in the room. The murder weapon is still unaccounted for. You see, Mr. Wright? The bust wasn't in my room. Furthermore, Detective Dip Dick Gumshoe executed the search by complete surprise. We took Acro directly to the prosecutor's office after that. End of story. Just wait a second. Something's funny about all this. <laughs> it looks like you lack the final nail to put into my coffin. But, but... What about the scarf? What about the note? What about them, Mr. Wright? No offense, but the only evidence that is relevant here is that which pertains to the death of the ringmaster. You should know that by now. Ah! Do something, Nick. 
Don't let this case slip away. The bus, where is it now? Hmm, where's the bus right now? You're Phoenix Wright. You know where that bus is. I'm sure you do. There's not even a single clue. How am I supposed to know where the bus is? Well, I can answer for you, Phoenix, where the bus is. Bang. But we'll get there. It seems this case is coming to a close. The defense's counter-arguments look to have fallen short. Thank you for your support. Ah! I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Wright. Bang. I think that brings to an end the cross-examination of this witness. Hold it. Maya says, where is Max's bust? The defense needs time to prepare to present its la- I mean case. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous and I just bit my tongue. Huh? What? We need time to do what? Oh! Why are you the most surprised person here? She's your aide, isn't she? Do you really have a, a case to present, Mr. Wright? What? Are you asking me? The rest is up to you, Nick. Good luck. <laughs> wow, she just... She threw us under the bus. Hey, wait, you can't be serious. Acrobats always have their lives on the line, don't they? That's how Acrobats lived his life up until now. Now it's time for us to walk our own tightrope. We don't, we're starting to lose. Bang. Very well, the defense may proceed. He doesn't have a clue, and I don't think he'll be finding one anytime soon. It's true, we are quite dumb. Walking the tightrope of logic. There's no room for a false step. Sink or swim. The only way through is forward. Oof, another four point penalty. That's pretty rough, rough. The murder weapon. Where is Max's bus now? So, even if you weren't sure where it actually was, if you don't know what the big reveal of this case is, I think you could logically rule out the first two, because you know Von Karma was already at the lodging house multiple days. You know she was in the big top, literally the day before. So, if you were to logically eliminate everything, the only possible answer that you could select here is somewhere in the courtroom. It's somewhere in Narnia, it's true. It's obvious, the bus is inside this very courtroom. It's, it's obviously where? Allow me to pinpoint the location of the bus once and for all. So this one you could also logically go through to figure out. So it is nice. I, I, did, I did like this little setup. It did make me think a little bit, but man, the penalty for getting it wrong is so brutal. So I'm sure a couple people probably gave over it here on their first playthrough. So we know the judge doesn't have it. I mean, the prosecutor withholds evidence all the time, but she's claiming not to have it. So the only possible response is the witness stand, with the intent being that he's been hiding it with the wheelchair all this time. Hence, putting his life on the line, living the tightrope slash acrobat life. <laughs> Acro. I'm sorry to ask you this, but do you mind if I take the blanket off your wheelchair? I'm sorry. I didn't quite hear you, Mr. Wright. Well, you are a big guy. You have a pretty big wheelchair because of it. I just wanted to make sure you weren't hiding anything under that blanket. Because it seems to me that it'd be really easy to say... Hide a bust under there. Ha, 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 ha. Once again, your penchant for humor hits me where it hurts, Mr. Wright. I think it's pretty amazing that you can laugh in your position. However, your lightheartedness doesn't change the fact that the bust is under there. We all know that you can't leave the lodging house by yourself in your condition. That proved inconvenient for Miss Von Karma. Oh, when Miss Von Karma happened to search her room yesterday, she had found the murder weapon in your room. It would have been all over. Which is why you had to hide it. In the only place that you could hide it. Under your wheelchair. 
Which is why, Acro, I have to ask you again. Would you please remove the blanket from your lap? Well done, Mr. Wright. Masterfully played. Whip. Fist bang, fist bang, fist bang. You, you fool! How could you? Oh, chat, she's losing again. You've got me. I've been bagged by a real pro. Actually, two of them. Two of them? Miss Francesca Von Karma and Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? There's just one thing I'd like to know. How did you know to launch the surprise search on my room last night? Bang. There were two pieces of decisive evidence. The cloak and the bust. I burned the cloak in my room and threw the ashes away with the trash. Regina always took my trash out every morning, you know. But the bust. Obviously, I couldn't throw that away. When you executed your search, all I could do was try and hide the bust. And the only place I could hide it quickly was under this wheelchair. Miss Von Karma, you had things all figured out, didn't you? I was completely sucked in by your calculated strategy. And now to be caught in the middle of court hiding the murder weapon. There's no way I can escape that. So you've got me. Well done, Mr. Wright. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Hmm. It all makes sense now. I can't believe that Von Karma thought that far ahead. It's amazing. Uh-huh. You definitely couldn't tell by looking at her. I know I sure couldn't. I can't believe it. Me. Make a mistake. Why did I order a surprise search of your room? If only I hadn't done that. Bang. It seems we finally arrived at the truth. Acro. Yes, Your Honor. Did you kill the ringmaster of the Barry Big Circus, Mr. Russell Barry? Yes, Your Honor. I'm responsible for that crime. Acro. All my brother wanted was for Regina to like him. That's why he'd tease her. One day, my brother sprinkled some pepper on Regina. She started seizing so hard, you couldn't help yourself from laughing. That's why Regina thought it'd be funny to get him back in the same way. And that's why she covered the scarf with pepper. I know she didn't mean for anything bad to happen. I know this. She just wanted to make my brother sneeze a few times too. But I just couldn't forgive her, no matter what. What am I truly guilty of? I'm guilty of never, ever, being able to understand her. Your brother became a star. Regina believes that in, in that so purely that she would laugh innocently when saying it. Too innocently. I just couldn't stand it, no matter how hard I tried. That's when you decided to do something about Regina. Oh, dreadful. So are you saying that you're a victim in all of this as well? No, that's not what I mean. Oh, he's crying. I'm nothing but a murderer. That's who I am. At first, I thought I'd killed myself. Then I pondered giving myself up. But I couldn't just up and leave. I just couldn't. Not yet. That's why I tried to pin this on Max. Max, I'm so sorry. I just, I just, I just couldn't up and leave yet. This has been such a strange case. It's almost a reflection of the circus itself. We, yeah, we already made the, the corpse a clown slash circus, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm an idiot. I can't believe it. You beat me again. I believe this case... Oh, <clears throat> I believe this case is now beyond any point of possible discussion. 
Thus, I'd like to declare my verdict. Not guilty. Here we go, chat. The confetti was prepped. Bang. This court is adjourned. Oh, we're actually going to end at a reasonable time today. December 30th, 4.27 p.m. Just a court. Defendant lobby number five. F -f fabulous But to be honest, I can't really be too happy about this. Acro, the ringmaster, Regina, and Bat. Not a single one of them was a bad person inside, huh? That's a good question. And one I don't know the answer to. Many congrats, but only a max a million of them. Thank you. What's with the vibe in this room? We're just thinking about Acro. No, no, no. You worry about people too much. They'll be like this forever and never be happy. Huh? Wah! She's been like this for a while now. Wah! It's all my fault. Wah! Sweetie. Sweetie pie. Bad and Acro. They're never coming back. Now, now everyone's going to split up. Regina, Mr. Wright, tell me something. Wait, why do her eyes look normal there? <laughs> Wait, no, that's really gonna bother me. Wait, they they moved her up. Wait, okay. <laughs> right, chat. Never mind. I guess just that one image specifically doesn't follow the ear, eye, nose correlation. Whatever. Mr. Wright, tell me something. What do you want to know, Regina? Hackbert said something right at the end. I just couldn't up and leave yet. Does that mean that Acro? Is he gonna try and get his revenge on me? <laughs> you know what? I think the first time I played this game, I was so done with this case. I just said, of course he is. <laughs> I didn't care what the answer was. I think the, I think the answer is I don't think so though. <laughs> He's not gonna do that to you, Regina. Are you sure? You really sure? I can believe that? Yep. Akro doesn't have any desire for revenge anymore. If that's true, I want to see some evidence. Huh? I want to know you're not just making up that stuff about Akro not wanting revenge. Um, I guess I present that maybe? Guess we'll go with this. Take that. Take that. Akro didn't want to get caught for a reason. He wanted to see his brother open his eyes again. That. That's right, Regina. He's still alive, you know. So that way you won't go to jail for uh, involuntary manslaughter or some similar charge. I never knew. But now that acra has been caught. Uh-huh. I know. What? I'll do it. I'll stay next to Bat as long as it takes. Until he opens his eyes. Then we can meet Acro again. That's so sweet of you, Regina. I'm sorry, Acro. I'm sorry, Bat. Well... Hopefully this is enough to give her a little peace of mind. Hey, Max. What is it, Mo? Really put you through a lot, didn't we, buddy? Sorry about what happened. So whatever you'd like to leave us. Pay your fee and rip up the contract. I understand. What a fabulous thing to do for me. I might even leave tomorrow. What's going to happen to the circus now? Ah, that's the big question. Ringmaster was really an amazing person, wasn't he? Even though he's not here anymore, everyone's sticking together. The staff, the performers, no one wants to leave the circus. That's why I made a decision. What is it? I've decided that I will take over as the new ringmaster. I'll turn the circus into the best circus this world has ever seen. The best circus the world has ever seen. D -d don't laugh. That's quite the goal. Yay, I can't wait. Then I guess that changes things. Huh? There's only one thing the best circus the world has ever seen needs. The world's best illusions, which means the circus needs the best magician the world has ever seen. Max, let's work together and make our cir circus super fabulous. What do you say, big guy? I don't know what to say. All I could say is thank you. Um, um, Regina, you're gonna help them out too, aren't you? Um, I don't know. Maybe the circus would be better off without me. 
What are you talking about, Regina? Why don't you think I brought you to the court today? Um, we've got to work together to make the Berry Big Circus bigger than it's ever been. Mo? Mo's right, sweetie pie. It can't be the Berry Big Circus without Regina Berry. Max? Nick? It seems like everything is going to turn out all right here. Can't wait to go see the best circus the world has ever seen. We'll save you the most fabulous seats. It'll take us a while to get ready. I'm gonna order special whoopee cushion seats. Ah ha ah ha ah ha ah ha 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 I see. What made the case? Yesterday's surprise raid. Really paid off just like you said it would, sir. Um, you had it all figured out, didn't you? It was just a theory. If Acro really was the killer, I thought this was the only way it could end. Especially if he was the defense attorney. You mean Mr. Wright? It feels like I'm at the end of like a Metal Gear Solid conversation, like I'm in the credit scene. Of course. Well, Detective, my plane is on the runway. As for Mr. Acro's case, you need not worry. I plan to personally stop by the Chief Prosecutor's office as soon as I get back. The reveal. Dun dun dun. Understood, sir. I'll be waiting for you, Mr. Edgeworth. Yeah, see, Calvi should even said Mr. President. Exactly. They even call him Mr. Edgeworth, too. <laughs> it's amazing. Episode 3, Turnabout Big Top, the end. I know, that outfit is something. No, 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 don't go to farewell my turnabout. No, 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 no. We'll save. Oh my goodness, it's edgy, it's something. So we're gonna stop here. We're gonna save the new trial for another day. So, let's talk about this case, chat. <laughs> Just, I... I'm not even sure. Oh, oh, oh don't, don't, don't autoplay the case. Aim. I hit the cancel button. That didn't mean to continue. Okay, I'm going to force close it. So, wow, this case is something. I'll back up the soundtrack slightly as we talk over it. Where do I begin about my thoughts and feelings on the case? Well, obviously, I'm super not okay with the ages of the characters it came off as really creepy i think this has some of the worst side characters and i don't know if it's because it's just a lot of joke characters and their humor like really doesn't resonate with me so it just kind of like really painfully sticks out to me as one of my least favorite cases uh in the series from what i've played doesn't mean i've played every every single case and every single game in fact i haven't this was the game that made me stop playing the game <laughs> we haven't we haven't quite gotten to the point where i rage quit we're getting close though so like here's my big problem with this case so if we if we somehow get over the mountain that is the very creepy insinuations with the circus and the dating of the characters like the the character arcs in this and the relatability of the characters are basically non-existent. So let's just take every single person in the case and why I don't like this case. So like, Acro is okay as a villain. He's okay. I liked I liked the reveal of the, of the wheelchair. I like that a lot. I think when it comes to like the ventriloquist character, irritating. I find his gimmick really, really irritating. And you have to kind of think about it, chat. Like, ultimately, what was the conclusion of his story at the end of the case? Like, he went to go propose to the girl. Then the ring got stolen. The end. There's no follow-up. There's no tying up of the loose ends. They never just He never has a discussion with Maximilian. He never really has that discussion with Phoenix Wright. What was the point? Then you kind of go into Regina. Her whole super innocent attitude is like, well, first of all, creepy for other reasons. But let, let's try to get past the mountain. We're trying to get, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna somehow climb like the top of like, La 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 Mountain to get over like the absolute train wreck that is that relationship. Which by itself, just to be very clear, is enough to sink the case. But like, what was her character arc? 
she basically got another person killed and then she decided that she will i guess mature a little bit but she's not really punished for the crime that she committed in fact she got away with it because the father killed a lion so hey if you don't like animals being killed as part of a plot point well you just have another reason to not like this case um so yeah she just kind of got away with it by the way shrug i guess then we can even go into the defendant specifically oh and by the way i didn't want to ruin it earlier but th this theme is specifically mile edgeworth's theme going back to something i mentioned at the beginning of the session but uh from the standpoint of like again like you break it down character by character and the, the, the whole thing is just like if you're supposed to like these characters, they really failed. So I'll take an example. I don't remember if the show edited it to do this or if I just read it somewhere. I don't feel like looking it up. Chat can fact check me in real time. But like, wouldn't Max have been such a much more likable character if the reason he went to go and negotiate the contract a week later was to make sure that the other people in the circus got paid because he had like this thing where he realized that even though he had the bust that the thing that made the circus great was the whole cohesive whole of the circus and not just himself where was his where was his damn character arc screw that character he's so obnoxious in this trial like there's so many like small like you can you could change so little with this case and make it so much more interesting like one plot detail like that would have made the case so much better in terms of reveals and making the characters more relatable and then you could have gone more into like the whole you know i'm really a hick thing and it really shows that he has like a you know kind of a softer personality but no, it just comes up that he just kind of comes off as a fraud. <laughs> that was my takeaway with how he was presented throughout the entire trial. That he puts on this everything is fabulous kind of facade. But we never really get to see the true him. And then he never has to really fess up or confront that kind of side to himself in front of the court. Yeah, he just comes off as like a total jerk. And it's like, you could do this for like every character because they don't have like this moment where like you can have like a relatable moment with them or they have like traits that are interesting with them. And it, it ruins what could have been like a much more interesting case because the characters are just so inherently awful as human beings and as like in terms of character arcs too. And it's just really unfortunate. Like if you take Mo as well, like Mo could have had a bigger plot point and why he started helping out is because maybe he found out about the contract later and that would have explained his, his change of heart kind of thing. And you know, it could like they could have brought up they sort of brought up his concern about the the circus life itself. And I don't mind him taking on like a potentially like parental role to Regina. I guess that's like a somewhat redeeming quality for him. And that's why he brought her to the courtroom, but like honestly, the game flow itself did not it didn't really introduce it in kind of a natural or a cohesive way between it. And it's like just like a couple lines here and there, either altered, added or removed, would have made the characters just so much better. Although, to be fair, um, his jokes were terrible. There's no saving those. They would have to actually make them somewhat funny if they wanted me to not just kind of like roll my eyes and be like, wow, this is painful, terrible. I think I saw a complaint online prior to me playing this game was uh, the fact that if you press him at all, the judge basically ultra penalizes you because he doesn't want to deal with the clown. Like, I think that kind of feeds back into what I was saying before, where like, even the in-universe characters hate a lot of these characters. Like, basically everybody hated Max. Basically everybody hated Mo. They seem to have this weird change of heart thing with the milk. They don't really go into that, by the way. Like, that didn't really tie into anything. They're like, oh, here's milk. And they're like, oh, I need that for the performance. But they never, like, really touch upon why or, like, admit their feelings in some other way in a game that is very much about spelling out everything that they're thinking. Like, we can imply that there was a much better story there, I'm sure. But it just, it just failed to execute. Um, I would say also from the standpoint of characters like 
No, I think that covered most of the characters I wanted to talk about. We didn't really know the Ringmaster that well. It's kind of whatever. Um, I would say the other point that kind of annoyed me in terms of, like, ruining some of the mystery of the game is that they didn't really produce a red herring as to who did it. Because, like, you're automatically going to assume it's not Max, right? And so, as you go through the different testimonies, the game just kind of withholds that somebody's living on the third floor until basically right before the trial. And you don't even meet Acro until after the first trial, which is kind of awkward. So from a mystery perspective, I mostly figured it out. I was a little confused by a couple points, and that had to do with the absolute stupid point where when he was bent over the wooden box, the cloak just happened to go in such a perfect special way that it, it lined up exactly like the testimony. And I think that was definitely the weakest part of the case, and I really hated that part of the case. Even even playing through it a second time, having tuned some of that out, I forgot how dumb that plot point was. That was easily my least favorite part of the trial when it came to the murder details. Uh, but I do like that they implied that he killed the wrong person. I think there were enough clues that you could have gradually figured it out as you went along. Like, I like that the bust was in the photo ahead of time. And you could see it and maybe make some, like guesses that the monkey had moved it. I think they gave you like enough clues that even people that were not like necessarily fully tuned into the case or really uh, accustomed to mysteries could probably figure it out. But man, that final part of the case just mm, really wish they rewrote that slightly. The yeah, chat, I mean, I, I guess I'll have to give the case credit where credit's due. We didn't summon Mia, finally. We decided to let her rest in peace for a case, so we did it. It took, like, eight cases, but we basically got there. And as I said before, I did like the wheelchair reveal. I think it had interest- not interesting. I, I like that it was kind of like a parallel to the Von Karma bullet in the shoulder thing. Those are- there are, like, some positive points of the case, but I think the characters themselves, the lack of arc, uh, with the characters, their gimmicks are kind of annoying. It's kind of like one of those things where even if you compare like really annoying comedy characters, or people potentially find these characters annoying, like compare like Old Bag, for example, from the second case. I think it was the second case. Third case? Second second or third case. Anyway, this the Samurai Turnabout case from the first game where she kind of started off really harsh, and then she had another side to liking Edgeworth, but then she as a character grew and decided to support, you know, her actor, and we got to learn more about her motives. Like, even though she had a very annoying gimmick of, of you know, just kind of ramming stuff at us, at least there was, like, something I could point out where I'd give, like, oh, okay, you know, I can kind of put myself in her shoes, even though she's definitely meant to be, like, a comedy character. And I think they just really missed the mark. Third case, thank you. They really just missed the mark completely with that one, which is unfortunate. So, yeah, it's just like, if they're going to do comedy characters, like... Ugh. Definitely don't have this many in one case. That's for sure. That was, that was mistake number one. Mistake number two, they just had characters that were just com like completely irrelevant, honestly. And it's like, why did they even bother writing them? And honestly, most of the characters kind of came across as having some brain damage. Like, I'm not making, like, a teehee funny joke. Like, genuinely, like, these people are, are mentally scarred and should probably go seek help, therapy, or something else. Because there's just something not right with them. And again, sometimes it's from, like, a comedy angle. But then when they, like, keep going into it with more serious things, it's like, okay... Like, is this is this still part of an act? I don't know if this is an act anymore. I'm getting a little concerned. But yeah. I mean, Von Karma's Von Karma. She's not my favorite prosecutor. I, I laugh a little bit when she does the foolish fools, but the whips do get kind of annoying. I'm not going to lie. At least, it, it was like, she mostly flexed the whip, fortunately, in this case, but yeah, just something about her. Just, 
I don't know. I, I don't like her as much as the prosecutor. I'll see if she'll end up being my least favorite prosecutor over time or not, depending on how she plays in the later cases. Um, I guess I'm. I guess I don't really care about what's his name, Payne, the tutorial prosecutor, that's in the first case of each game. He he's just there to be kind of unlikable. And Von Karma, I don't know if she's supposed to be unlikable, but at least she seems more confident, so she's more of an antagonist, I guess. But anyway. Um, the other thing that was just really stupid and that kind of hung over a lot of the case, and I feel like honestly detracted from it a lot, was them like very purposely interchanging the word gone and dead a lot with in regards to Edgeworth. And it's not specific to this case. It definitely appeared in the prior cases where he just didn't want to talk about it. And it's okay to set up a mystery, but don't pretend he's dead for three cases. Come on. Come on. It's kind of like an eye roll moment. I'm glad they did finally reveal him at the end, because that whole charade was getting annoying, to be honest with you. But yeah, it's just one of those things where I just feel like it, it really needed more time to cook. To add a bit more cohesion between the characters. But yeah, not, not my favorite. I don't know if it's the worst case so far. I would say if we take into the account the age and the creepiness of it all, I would say it's pretty pretty high up there in my least favorite cases. But uh, we're still pretty early in the series, but this is, this is contender for top three at the moment, easy. We're going to see the other major contender for top three when we continue next week. Actually, we're not continuing next week. I forgot. I have other plans. But when we continue next time, we'll go ahead and do it then. But chat, I think that's about all I have to say about that case. Other than I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. This kind of left a sour taste on my mouth the first time I played it. And it kind of wore me down for the next case. So I think taking a break after this case is probably a good call. Given that I had a very strong strong negative reaction to the case that we're about to come into so from that standpoint chat let's go ahead and say goodbye to youtube uh so if you did watch to this point in the video of the vod i'd just like to say thank you for watching hope to see you again next time